We're doing good with time tonight. It is 11 minutes past the 8 o'clock hour. Welcome everyone to the In The Spotlight radio show tonight. If the voice sounds just a tad bit different, it's because I am battling this wicked, wicked flu. But no flu was going to prevent me from being here tonight for the In The Spotlight radio show. always listens. My uncle Dodai always listens. My aunt in Canada, Auntie Sylvia, Auntie Jackie, my stepmom. My brother Bernard is always tuned in. And not forgetting my sister Gilks. Gilks is always tuned in and locked into the program. I can't miss her at all. 
my mom i think that she she can't always get the radio station so i'm not sure if she's actually listening but good night to her and good night to every other family member who's listening tonight uh to the program this is the in the spotlight radio show and tonight so we have in the spotlight a gentleman who's been doing great work all along and many of us, maybe even me, has probably been underestimating what he's been doing, the type of work he's been doing, the level of work that he's producing. But he has shaken up a few of us a bit, if you want to put it that way, <laughs> producing one of the biggest hits in the Caribbean and the world right now, number one on the reggae iTunes, iTunes reggae and um, I mean it's interesting that it falls under that category but we'll talk about that too during the course of the program it's a song produced by Kish Krishna Dada Lawrence Dominican and performed by some of the biggest artists in the region Marshall Montano, Bungie Garland, Skinny Fabulous And he's here tonight, not just to talk about this, but I want to get to know this young man a bit more. And um, you know, we met on Saturday, had a bit of a chat, um, shared with him the fact that I always thought he was just someone, you know, sitting in a studio, playing with his keys, playing with his, his, his computers, playing with his, 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 whatever instruments it is that he uses to produce the music that he produces. But... This young man right here is a wealth of knowledge. He's very intelligent. And I was quite taken aback. And I, I almost had to somewhat apologize to him and say, this is the perception that I have. And I never realized that you were on this level. And it is my pleasure to have him on the program tonight on the In The Spotlight radio show. And I know that, you know, quite a few persons are going to be tuned in and locked in. I know he's done another program uh, before. I know he's done another program didn't get to listen so i may have missed some of what you know he may have shared but that's okay we have our own audience right. and i'm eager to hear what he's going to be talking about and sharing with us on the program tonight so thank you so much for tuning in whether it be via q95 or 95.1 or whether it be on www.q95da.com whether it be it by my facebook live or that is also live as well and um, yes, so that is live, we are live. So there's quite a few mediums to listen and to view tonight to take advantage of that. Let me use the opportunity to say and acknowledge the folks here at Q95. Mr. Greg, I really want to thank you for this time slot that you've provided to me um, to share you know, the life stories of other people to discuss important subjects and topics. I really do appreciate it. And I really want to thank Josephine Gabriel and Company Limited. They provide our water. I want to just say hi to the folks at Garraway Hotel, the folks at Dominican News Online, and all of you who support in one way or the other. We really do appreciate you, especially Innovate Multimedia. We thank you for your support. And of course, Kalisha, who is usually here on a Monday night supporting uh, with the program. I'm, I'm excited. I'm not very well, but I'm excited to be here and we're going to have a wonderful program so you keep it locked right here on the In The Spotlight radio show. We'll introduce our guest in just a while. He wanted me to start off with this one right here. So let's see. We're ready, Kanisha? Here we go. <laughs> Voice of life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's not. It's uh, something is going on there. So um, once we get that uh, going, once we get that going, then you know we will we will play it at some point of the program. I'm not sure what impact it was going to have on on data in terms of how we start this program. But um, are we? Are we? No. Are we? We will. We'll get back to that. No problem. No problem with that whatsoever. So Dada, let's go across to you then. Let's go across to you and begin tonight's program. Good night. Good evening. They say always say good evening. Good night is when you going off to bed or you your final word for the night. You say good night, but you say good evening. Good evening to you, my dear. Good evening to you, for nights for um and your many listeners. Um, many, many listeners of Creative Five, and also your many listeners on um, on in the spotlight on Facebook. 
also my families on um, my Facebook live because we don't use fans anymore, we use families, you know what I mean? Families, we families. pluralize Yeah, yeah, yeah Alright, okay right? <laughs> so, yeah, yes. so, yeah, and thanks for inviting me on the program um, Is that saying nothing happens before your time, you know what That's I mean? That is correct so, Yes, I it, feel Everything we happens at the right, at time, the right time When it's supposed to supposed happen to. And you're supposed to be on now Yeah Right? That's right. And we're going to have a fun time with the program. Um, we're going to share and um, we're going to learn as well um, from you on the program. So uh, I, I really want to start off. I want to start off on a lighter side though. So people know you as Dada. Um, so you're Krishna, interesting name, Krishna Dada Lawrence. Where did that Dada originate from? <laughs> um interestingly the dada have nothing to do with music right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a name that you know where when you're young you get a name you know what i mean so how that name ended up coming along was i remember we were playing football we were young like maybe about 10 11 years old or whatever we were playing football back in state by the and they that is to say it's called that really school is not you know we were playing football in the road and thing so one of the guys who were playing with one of the older guys was telling me to go and tackle a, a, you know, a guy with a boy. Said, go and tackle him and tackle him and whatever. So when I go, I kind of tackle him rough and brush him, you know what I mean? And the guy fall down and take him. So he tell me, boy, you tackle him like a dad, and you're a boy. And that just stuck with me, you know what I mean? Really? Yeah. But what is a dad? I don't know. But it stuck, right? It must be some <laughs> kind of person with some... Special skills. I don't feel like he was trying to be creative. No. It's probably just all things happen. It right? just came out right. and it stayed. It just not, that's it. So nothing special really no. behind the, the, the data. No. All right, fair enough. You are from a community <coughs> that we refer to as Blue Blue. Blue, Blue. And people are, are your, the people of that particular community, I know that they support their own. Right. And um, they're very talented, they're very creative. And you come from that community. Tell me about your community. Well, I come from Baffer State, six cousins in Baffer State to be exact. That is the first lane number in the school, right? Um, and I guess I grew up in Baffer State at the time, and Baffer State was very organic, you know what I mean, so to speak. Um, organic in the sense of, well, we didn't have, we didn't have computer, you know what I mean, when we were young and stuff, so everything we used to do is on the road. Outside playing with the guys, going by the college, picking guava, picking mango. Then you know, children life not growing up before, going by the river, playing hoop. You know, growing up as young kids, growing up in, in that kind of community where we have, you know, young boys in, in, in that, you know, in Buffalo State, in, in Dominica, you know what I mean? Very local upbringing. Um, yeah, so Buffalo State kind of teaching you a lot of things because. Um, you know, Baba is said to be a certain type of way, you know what I mean? As far as, you know, the, the type of situation we used to be mm -hmm. in that, you know? We don't call Baba said a ghetto, mm -hmm. but it was somewhat... It was termed that way, or right. it was looked upon right. in that way. And we were considered to be the ghetto youths. Right. You know what I mean? Because we come from that kind of... Uh, Did you consider yourself to be a ghetto youth? You know, that's a very interesting question, you know what I mean? Because I have an interesting perspective on ghetto and being a ghetto youth, quote-unquote. Before when I was growing up, I didn't really think about ghetto youth like that. I mean, you don't really think about much, you know what I mean? So, but then as I grew older and grew in knowledge, I learned the term ghetto and where it came from. Yeah, I never really affiliated myself. To that kind of lifestyle mm -hmm. to begin with, right? Because there's a stigma. You, but what did you understand it to be? Well, I feel like because we come from that kind of background, mm -hmm. where I guess people would say like because of how the, the neighborhood was, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they say you always get to you. Mm -hmm. You come so from is, that place. Is it, is, it an, is, is it a term that probably persons would consider once you're getting to your bad person? Yeah. Or you come from a bad situation, That's what a mean. bad background. Yeah, it's a very negative term that it you don't want to be associated term. with at all the time. All right. You know what I mean? And I kind of felt that as a child growing up and then when I learned where the term ghetto came from, 
I don't know the background and the history of ghetto. I don't have anything to do with ghetto you at know, all. You want nothing and I just try my best when I talk to the youth, not just in Buffet State, but in other places as well, that come from similar type backgrounds. I try my best to tell them to disassociate themselves by every means from that kind of a lifestyle. If ever it's in their mind to do or whatever, just stay clear and be term. Because it's a very negative term and it's a very destructive term. So what I urge people to do, I guess that's the first note <laughs> of men tonight. We learn the term ghetto and where it come from and what it's about. Because we too many other times we use terms very loose. You know what I mean? And words are power the Bible tells that, right? Mm -hmm. So when you call yourself a ghetto, you talk a ghetto man, then you go to be a certain type of way. Because you put that kind of curse on yourself. How would you then describe yourself? I mean, right now? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say I'm a very... At face value, I would seem like a person that is... You know, very... <laughs> <laughs> I'm very... To say, I'm not, I won't say to myself, mm -hmm. but I'm very reserved. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can be somewhat of an introvert. You are very, very introvert. That's me. 150,000%. Introvert. Um, so yeah, I'm very... I'm, I'm an introvert. You know, as far as introvert goes, but also I can be, if um, socially, I mean, if I'm around people, I know and that kind of thing. I'm the funniest person to be around, the clown, all that kind of thing. We're talking the most nonsense and making people green and that kind of thing. You know what I mean? That's my kind of way. And then if you want to go deeper, you know they say you never judge a book by your cover, right? I judge you by your cover yeah, to that's some extent. Look, that's <laughs> but that's that's fine because I cannot present myself in that manner. Like that. Because mm -hmm. I do I don't really like people to I don't really like to show out. You know what I mean? I prefer to do what I do in the background mm -hmm. and then let the work show out for me. Well it's speaking for you right now, isn't it? So now I can speak after the work. So, because when we speak about you being an introvert, you know, I paid your visit um, on Saturday just so we could chat, you know, um, and you, you're in a room and I suspect for most of the time by yourself. Yeah. Being creative. And that don't happen, that don't happen just now, you know, from ever since maybe what, 13, 14 years, I just always like to be in my own zone so I could do what I really want to do inside. You know what I mean? And it just so happened that music is a thing that I end up having that kind of passion for and that interest to know how it works and what makes it tick and you know why are cooking so hard, you know, all the, the intricate details that we don't spend time trying to know. So I want to know all. But do you think that, that to some extent makes you the person into the person that you are? The fact that your work it, it, it needs you to interact with the people that you're working with, right. but at the same time, it also requires you to be in your own space, being creative, allowing your creative juices to flow. Do you think that has in some way um, caused you to be somewhat of the reserved individual that you are? I guess it's probably it's just all, you know, they say when it starts online, so yes. things happen, it's just how it is with me. I guess it's like a perfect storm. Of me being an intro, but I didn't know that I was that before. But I like it. You like it? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And music is a thing that works for introverts. Yes. True. Creative people on the whole are introverts. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So it's just a perfect storm. Perfect storm. Yeah. Yes. So let's talk more about um, the, the individual. So you come from the community of, of Bath Estates, mm -hmm. and you've made it clear that you do not want to be associated with the term get to you. That's all. And um, you said you, you did your, 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 your research and background. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I also discovered about you. You don't just sit in the studios and, and, and be creative and produce, but you seem to, to, to read a lot yeah, and to, to, to inform yourself yeah. and to educate yourself. Tell me what brought out that that aspect of, 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 of you. You know, like, you know what these people you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I do, Dad. Like, That's I what I, I do. do. <laughs> I do. I do. You know? Because that is very interesting. First time a person kind of asked me that question. Wow. So, you know, we don't know. So, it's like, music is not just about music. Music is a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes, it makes people dance. 
and you can use it for various um, reasons, you know what I mean? But to learn the science of music is spiritual. Science of music. Yeah, it's a science. It's deep. You know what I mean? So I guess it kinda hold me, suck me in from a from as a child, you know what I mean? To know about the workings of it and the formulas and all that kind of thing. And a then, formula? Yeah, absolutely. Like food or like a scientist in a lab is the same thing, you know. You know what I mean? They're probably using um, some compound or whatever. My compound is instruments. Mm -hmm. And your fingers. And my fingers and all that kind of thing. You know what I mean? So what happened is listening to different music, different type, different artists, you get to like some. You know there's always the popular ones that you will listen to. But then there's always those that will catch you. You know what I mean? Like you're not deliberately trying to listen to them in a sense or whatever, but the music you kinda go away from it. So you listen to the lyrics and their stories, you know what I mean? And then you listen to the struggle. For example, especially for artists that sing social commentary music. It doesn't necessarily have to be calypso, there's kadas, reggae, these music Kadas Lipso and reggae music is revolutionary music. This is, this is music of revolution. Back in the 70s was a period of revolution in the world. Mm -hmm. The music is telling it's, it, it is it's documented in music. It's not gonna, it's, it's like, you know, it, it is sealed in time in the music that has been created, that has been created in that, that, that time period, right? So, me listening to Bob Marley and, and um, the Wailers and Tosh and all the guys and them singing music songs of revolution and listening to Midnight Groovers, Chubby and Gordon and Jeff and Harley and them men. I realized that they're singing the same message, man. But they just do it in Creole and Bob them doing it in, in English, right? It's the same exact message about the revolution and so I was like, what? So I don't know more. So I go deeper and deeper. So I tell you about who your roots of the African and that kind of thing. I say, yeah, you see that? I feel in that kind of vibe. And then it so happened that, you know, I'm a huge fan of Bujo. But, but yesterday, because some people see him come out of jail and everybody wants to be on the band, no, I'm a huge fan of a child. So Bujo have a couple of tunes where he's speaking of, in one song in particular, I can't remember the song exactly, but the lyrics is um, basically talking about, um, I think it's Destiny. Yeah, Destiny. <laughs> so in that song, I think I think the same way that through that mystical communication we do, we keep on coming together, and I love to see brothers and sisters. I don't like this anymore, but, but that track, right? So in, from ever since that song, I kind of the lyrics kind of kind of catch me that but you're talking about a spiritual connection. So I always try to look for that spiritual connection in the music and all these things, and from then trying to learn about my Africanness and all that wow. kind of thing and. And then would you know had an interview that he did with um, on stage with um Winford and he was saying that um all his life grew up listening to dance or music, listening to Shabba Ramps and the guys and you know all that was good though, you know, he used to say you know he's he's a talented guy, so he do what he what he does do. But then when he meet Rastafari, you know what I mean? When he meet Rastafari it was it was Let me give you a little bit of let's see that's what you do. That's it. The sons of men. <laughs> The rich man's wealth is in the city. The obstruction of the poor is his poverty. The obstruction of his soul is vanity. Rastafari is like something clicked mm -hmm. in his head, you know what I mean? Like, and he met somebody else of the of, of the group, and it's like he felt at home. And then the same thing Bob, Bob Marley said happened to him when he met Rastafari, it just clicked, and when he met with the others, he felt home, and then it reflected on the music. From ever since, if I don't know if 
we do a lot of um, history of music around here, so but I'm a huge um, historian for music, right? So I know all of the stories. I try best to learn about the stories. That right? is so, I mean, I, I, I've not heard, you know, producers speak on that level, so that right, to me is right. pretty new. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I feel like, you know, in order for me to, to do what I do, I have to know about it, right? So, yeah, so I try my best to learn about the, um, the, the whole spiritual aspect of the music and why that, if you notice it, well, before Bob Marley was into Rastafari, his music was sort of different. It, like, it was more mainstream, um, commercial type, um, secular type music he was making. And then after, I'm after, learning from you too, then. Oh, well, yeah. Well, we we in class tonight. Isn't yes, it? <laughs> it's my show tonight. That's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so um, so after Bob met with um, with the, the whole Rastafari influence, it's like his music changed from being secular into spiritual. It was very spiritual for him after that. So, Buja had the same kind of experience from ever since he met with Rastafari. He made that album, the Till Shiloh, and then he came with that one there, that um. That album there. It's Destiny. Destiny. Destiny my album? I think so. Okay, well. Right, but I remember Till Shiloh is the one he made after Rastafari. Right? right? So because he's the one Mr. Mention with that, all of the, you know, the dance all and thing on it. But uh, Mr. Mench, um, Till Shiloh was where he had this song, I'm strange, this feeling, I'm feeling. But Jalo, we will always be here. Right. And then he just came from, I guess, the whole Rastafari movement kind of made Buju look internally. Mm -hmm. So the same thing happened to me from music. I had to look inside. And realize like, okay, what is my purpose for being here? You know what I mean? Even though I'm in Dominica, Dominica is a place. And I have a conviction to do music. But it's not just a conviction for music. It is, a, I, am, I have an opportunity, I have a vessel to spread a certain message. So that's how I start to look at the music. So I start to learn about my heritage watching documentaries after documentaries for hours and hours and hours every day every day learning about um you know the whole slavery thing and all of the lies they tell us growing up and nonsense and you know i was believing like we with that's why we have a, we as african people here in dominica do have a sense of self because we don't even know who we are and i went to that journey music brought me on that journey you know what i mean and I felt like I had to go on that journey to learn so I can I can know the the power that but I have. When did you realize though that you needed to to start, you know, going deeper into the, the, the work that you're doing because you're a producer, but then you realize, listen, for me to be able to be good at this, I need to understand at what point, at what stage did you realize that? I mean, I guess after, I mean, because when I started to do bouillon, right? So it's like Buya was just me being impulsive. Mm -hmm. So as a young child growing up, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, you're just doing what teenagers do. But then it was more than that to me at one point. It's like I started to, I, I wanted to change into something else. I wanted to grow. I wanted to, to become somebody else. Not a different person from myself, but um, a, a, a complete version of myself. You know what I mean? And I realized that um, there's more to the music than just sitting down making rhythm and that kind of thing. You know what I mean? So I have to go and look inside and see if I can develop to understand how to use that vessel, that medium that I have. You know what I mean? So when I look inside now, <laughs> I have to go on that spiritual journey. I saw the things that were affecting me emotionally. You know, I went through a lot of, as a, as a young boy, 21, 19, 20, 21. I went through a lot of bad experiences in music in Dominica. You know what I mean? I mean when you say bad experiences, what do you mean? You know the usual kind of thing where you feel like people when you grow up with people in music and you you're helping people. What I'm listening to help. Do you want to say that people were using you? Well I don't say that it, it coming across as a use. Mm -hmm. But I would say disrespect. Disrespect. You know what I mean? It's a better term to use than use. Use it right. for foolish people. Right. This is regular people deliberately doing something. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right, so that's what I felt. And you know, I feel like I was very open with people, you know what I mean? I was very 
um, organic. I wasn't. I didn't have any ulterior motives or nothing. I was just doing it because I love it. I love what we were doing. So I was expressing myself, helping other people, others grow. Mm -hmm. People used to come and give them all of my stuff, all of my samples, all of my readings, everything. Just give it to them because I feel like that will help you to grow. You know what I mean? I didn't feel like at the end of the day you're gonna take that and try to kick me. So that happened. Yeah, that happened. Hmm. From your closest people. People that dare you every day come in and sit down in my room in Bath and sit and drink all my mother juice <laughs> in the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah boy, I tell you. Let us let us go back to the beginning, um, Dada. Yeah. How did it all begin? How did you get into um into music producing? Did you start as a producer? And then I also want you to help us understand what is a producer? What does a producer do? We want to talk a bit about the whole creative process. So let us talk about how it all began. Right. So um, my journey in music didn't start with production. Uh -huh. No, it started. I, it's like DJing, you know what I mean? I always like to match up, line up two songs together. And from ever since with cassette. You know what I mean? When you start them double deck and yes. all the casting in parties and so on, yeah, so that's where the interest. So you started. are DJ? Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> I remember when we saw the Heineken DJ competition. Yeah. I was in that one once. So I judged that once. Maybe yeah. I judged you too? You judged me, you judged me. At our um, East Bay at Garraway? Yeah. You took part there? Yeah, man. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then, but I still feel like DJ wasn't a thing that I wanted to pursue, man. You know what I mean? I just like DJing because. I like the handling music, you know what I mean? But then after a while I kinda I, I feel like I needed to know more about the music the science, you know what I mean? So DJ wasn't 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 fulfilling that desire about the science. It was just me just using music and to me that is not what I wanted. So I started to do like I did I got a program called Fruity Loops. I heard about Fruity Loops. Right, right. I don't want to say that I was the first to use Fruity Loops like that, there were other people but um, I remember getting Fruity Loops when it was a better version. It wasn't even 1.0 yet. It was better. B-E-T-A. <laughs> That's where it was. You know, I seen before 1.0. From a partner of mine from Bafi said called Punti, Mega Butchan. <laughs> you know what I mean? Punti, yeah, my vibration. All these years ago, that's maybe 15 or so years ago, you know, like 16 or 17 years ago, that I got a program for him. What happened is he had, he had that software on his computer and he used to have little reading making that thing and I always used to find it when I go by him I like to hear that man I like to you know I was interested you know so I started going to the regular what program is that I want that journey man see that program there that's sick so Pontius will leave and he is going to call it at time <coughs> Pontius will leave me at his house alone yeah and I used to be there with videos on, on his computer all day working on like just trying to learn about the program and just playing making noise doing stupidness on it you know what I mean because I know but I don't know to teach me I just there Trial and error. Right. So yeah, and then from ever from after that he gave me a copy of it. I put inside on my computer. Mm -hmm. And that was He didn't sell that. it to you. He gave no, it to no, you. No, no, he gave it to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he, he wasn't so much into the music in that way, but he has a lot of software, you know, that is this kind of thing. So um yeah, and then I installed it on my computer and that was I think that was in 2002. Wow. Or 2001. Somewhere there. Right. So yeah, so ever since then I started to when I reach up when I when I insert my computer, I start making noise in my mother head now. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so at, at the beginning, you know, she was she was, you know what I mean She was not, not very happy. At first she wasn't checking for it, you know what I mean? But then after a while she started realizing that that is a noise in her head every day, you know what I mean? So she's like, boy, what do you know? Now can't think you do the one scale water kind of Rat in the yeah, house. yeah, the only big noise, the tone, something like, you know, like rats and all that kind of thing, you know what I mean? So, that was a uh, description of, of what was happening, so I was like, you know. So, yeah, and then I spent so much time in that. I, I just stopped going on the road, man. I used to be on the road with the guys, and ah, I stopped that. No because, time for no, that. No, no time for that. No. And that's maybe what, 12 years? From, yeah, I probably 12 years old, yeah. And then that just changed my life, though, you know what I mean? Like, I was inside steady, can't find me on the road at all. I mean, it's when the road at times, but not like before, you know what I mean? But did you, knew, did you know what you were doing? <clears throat> I didn't know what I was doing. 
But all I know I was interested in what I was doing. And you didn't have, you, did you have internet at the time to, you should have. Yeah, man, we had all dial up, we had all dial internet, you know. Dial up was already from 1995. <laughs> right, we had all dial up, you know. So, you know, them time is MSN Messenger and things. So, <laughs> once you reach after school, you come inside of the house, that's it. That's it. The MSN and Fruity Loops and all day. And your computer and yeah, the MSN and so. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So then from there, one thing led to the next and I kind of started getting, I started to understand it a bit more. I was getting frustrated because I, I felt like what I had in my head, I couldn't get it to come out. But you know what I mean? That's what frustration goes when you're learning to do something, right? So yeah. And then after a while, I kind of started picking up, I started making my own rhythms. As a matter of fact, I wanted at at one point I wanted to get samples like what they call drum machine samples and you know the RX sevens and the archives and all that kind of thing. And I recall reaching out to some a guy in WCK. No name. No name no word, but in WCK. Mm -hmm. And not Cornell. Okay, you know some people who want wanted to do it on Facebook. That's all it does do. So <laughs> don't mind look for things to be rural. We don't okay. need any rural story today. Yeah. We're talking about that. Right. So that guy, I remember reaching out to him asking him for samples. You know what I mean? And he was like, ah, oh, my brother, I want you to CD for my samples. And yeah. And I was like, he was very cold. You know what I mean? The way that he, he, um, he reacted to a young boy, 12, 15 years, asking you for samples. All you have to do is just say, well, you could do it better. I felt that way. You know what I mean? So I said, okay, cool. No problem. And but you felt bad about it. Of course, of course. Remember, I'm young and I'm a, mm -hmm. and I look up to the guys in CK, you know what I mean? CK to me is my idol. I don't say idols, but the mentors, like in a sense, you know what I mean? I still look up to them fellas. I don't say idol. Idol is not the term as well. So, um, so yeah. And they then, told you no. Not they. One person. One person, to sorry. One person yeah, told yeah, you yeah. no. And the person never turned around and changed I, their mind. I know, I know at that time. Not at that time. Yeah, but he turned around also he turned around now though. Aha. Uh -huh. See that? Okay. He turned around now. I but see. that's how it is. You know what I mean? So I think he knows it like that. That's not it. But then and then I, I still wanted the sample, so then I reached out to to heads well brush it as Daniel Philip plays bass for Chupuki. I know him. Right. So I asked heads, don't tell me heads so he's seeking doing some stuff. So I tell him go heads boy and some samples. Let's say don't read that I'll get that for you. And heads gave me my first. I don't know where you get it. I don't know if you follow it or what. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he gave to me my first CD with samples on it. Oh. And I will never ever forget heads for as long as I live because of that. Tell that thank you. Yeah, yeah, I have to be up heads for that because that changed my. That changed everything for me, you know what I mean? As far as doing music. And. Um, so yeah, and then so from the time I get the samples now is no it's like, no trouble something else. Explain to us what are samples. Really okay. So samples are bits yeah. of toads like uh, sounds. It's like sounds that you would record on to use back. Like um it would be a live a live um expression. Mm -hmm. It's something you record, like a piece of something. Okay. Like a like like a drum, stuff like that. Okay. You record it and then you can use it back in, in other the program, right? Okay. So it's called samples, mm -hmm. and tones, and stuff like that. So yeah, so ever since I get my first seed sample seed, I still have it as a matter of fact. I still have it after all these years. Yeah, so I started to make real noise in the end. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You should have put your side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? So I I started to try to learn to do what CK used to do, my cousin CK is still my band, you know mm -hmm, what I mean? Like mm -hmm. So I used to try to make all CK songs back. I remember the first song I learned to play first song ever I learned to play was Medve, you know what I mean? Of um, CK and things. So I used to study CK a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Like CK was just the book for me mm -hmm. at that time. You know what I mean? So I started to to learn their style, practice their style, and then use what I learned to create my own. Okay. Because I always believe in originality, you know what I mean? Because I don't want to be a copy, I want to be my, be my own version of myself. However, it is important to learn what your predecessors are doing, because it's called continuation. That's right. You know what I mean? So that's how we operate it. 
So that's what happened. And then from there, you know, I started to use the years passing like a couple years, I guess. Are you remember, still using the better and better? Well, from then time it's 1.0 now and 2.0. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, 3.0. Okay. Yeah, so my real damage started to happen from 3.0 now. You know, that's when. Um, I was about oh, five, oh, four, five, them kids time there. And I remember I saw the, there was a guy that I used to go to school with, um, high school, and then he was there with to sing and so on in King Field. So he tell me, boy, that boy, um, you have to record him, my brother, get a mic and record him. I was interested in recording, but he was pushing me to do it, you know what I mean? I told me, yeah, man, I get a mic. And so on, so I ended up going to my mother and buy a mic and I got $90. <laughs> you know what I mean? Take my little money and I'm buying my mic, $90, and, and try to record. And That's stop. like in your teenage prime. Right, yes. about 14, 15, then kind of time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And start, I get a program called New Endo that I get from um, Dominic or the Internet Pirate because you know we can't afford to buy them programs, right? Yeah, so um, yeah. And I started to learn about recording and doing a little recording thing. I was to record dancehall. Now dancehall had a huge influence on me at the same time too, as well as the boy. But apart from the boy, dancehall was it for me. So I used to make a lot of dancehall rhythms, listening to Vibes Cartel. They yeah, just, just, just came out. It was fresh, Bounty Killer, you know what I mean? And, and these guys. So I had a, a, a mixture of influences, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, in the music. So when I started to produce my own music now, I have my influences like... Timberland, Dr. Dre. Now these guys are are critical in this discussion because these guys are what they call producers. Mm-hmm. Now at the time the term producer wasn't the term that is why I was being used in Dominica so much. Right? So excuse me. Um I always want I don't want to be regarded as a beat maker or a rhythm man, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I wanted the title of producer. Yes, it's a bigger title. But to have the bigger title, you have and to have ranks. Yeah, like Shabba Ranks. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> so to have the bigger title, you have to have a bigger portfolio, I guess, of work. You know what I mean? In terms of what you can do. Um, so it's not just about making a reading. It's about putting an entire track together that somebody can use. So I look at music differently, not just about reading. So yeah, so I started to do more of that practicing, listening to Timbo, listening to Dre, all that. As a matter of fact, people used to call me Dr. Dre, you know what I mean? Because every time they, they would have passed by my house or whatever, that's what you're playing. Dr. Dre or Timbo, that's how it is. I grew up listening to these guys. So I always wanted to be that kind of a producer guy in Dominica, but I know that I had to, I had a journey ahead of me for me to really get the kind of um, respect I wanted in the business. So then from then on, we started to, I started to give uh, you know, some guys, my, my partners and them growing up in Buffett State, they had a little crew called Nursery Crew. So <clears throat> uh, that's around 2005. That's around 2005 happened, yeah. So what happened is now, they used to make their little track and thing and thing. So I used to try to, not try, I used to make the music to accompany the songs. So that's why I started making my own songs. In a sense, branching out from the whole. When you say your own songs, are you referring to your own? Beats. Yeah, my own own original. Things. Your own original yeah, sound. Own original that, sound. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Mm-hmm. From there, so I started experimenting with the whole the thinking like from out of the box in the sense of guys like Dre and Timbo and thinking like of, of music at that magnitude. And Even those if, guys are producers too. They are artists and producers. Right? Yeah, Dre and Timbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah you know what I mean? So I, I was I always had a big kind of. Uh, picture big vision for my music even if I started so small you know what I mean I should try to do my music with that kind of a big kind of perspe- perception of it so I should try all kind of a tones that's where you know that's what that, that conversation interesting tonight you know that's where the movie end up having all kind of them new tones that song is different from CK because I used to try this from listening to Timbaland and Dre like tones that was outlandish different from what CK used to use in a sense I wanted to get my own signature so I started using tones like signs and what they call uh, synthesizers, like signs, all that kind of thing. And um, different synths and all that kind of thing. So I to come into music because I want to sound different, mm-hmm. bigger. Mm-hmm. Right. So we made a track, uh, we tripped a song called One Two. One. The, the, the booyah nice, the booyah too. Like that, 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 that. 
So I remember now at the time now they playing football stadium we feel bad and say so I read um Jolly, who is one of the guys in the group, nursery, ended up making a remix, a parody of the one two song called it Cashew. <laughs> and the name of the song was Peanuts. You know what I mean? Somebody already spoke about that peanuts the other day. Right, right. Okay, you know, see that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The peanuts. And uh, you know we recorded it again, me trying my recording thing with new endo and all that kind of thing. So we recorded the peanuts and give it to DJ Quick. That was on the radio at the time. DJ Quick. You remember yes, Quick, right? Of course. That wasn't my so long buddy. Ago. Yes, that wasn't so long ago. Right, right, right. right. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. Right. And then quick started to rotate it and um who else? Um a few days on the radio at the time, Mystic started to rotate that heavy and it started to pick, get traction, you know, because people was calling in for it, it's a freak freak out kind of track, humorous type of song, you know? I think I remember. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was around like no, that was like just after opening of Carnival, I believe, you know, that's how I come out and things. So and then people are really like you know, that kind of really encouraged me to and push me to, to, to so that I push in that direction mm-hmm. that I could create my own thing in as much as it was a, a parody of what Triple K was doing, with all due respect to Triple K, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If, but, they, if people yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But I'm um, it, it coming from us that nobody knows in a sense and that kind of thing that hey you could do that you know what i mean so it, it was it was just encouraging so then from there we started to do other songs we did a song called salty desa all right <laughs> so around that time now was when we started to work with triple k so we kind of became one unit that was 05 or 06 so you started working with Triple K then. Right, yes. right. Also, the guys, nursery, I guess, was kind of in the background creating concepts mm-hmm. for Triple K. I'll tell mm-hmm. you, if you notice, Triple K have a sorted basin as well. Yep. Right. So that's where it came from. So we used to do that, and we had a synergy working together. And then the guys kind of branched out, and I stayed in the whole Triple K program, you know what I mean? Because I see Triple K you know, as, as the next step from my my um the next step in my uh, my conquest you know what i mean that's what i call it a conquest mm-hmm. or on the mission you know what i mean so triple k was like it was like a, a perfect fit for me in the back room of triple k in the engine room you know what i mean that's where i want to be i can express myself there behind the scenes behind the scenes that's right bad i mean bad in, in front of the scenes <laughs> Yes, in my yard, you know. So yeah, so we had an understanding. I used to, I feel like I could have reached more people with Triple K, so I could test more of my ideas and my concepts with Triple K. So I just give Triple K everything. I went all in with Triple K, all in, all in from 2006, and we made a lot of hits, yo. Tell us about some of them. So today, son. Sus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you did that. <laughs> it was a collaboration of the guys. Oh, you know what I mean? We don't try to step on any toes. Agreed. We take to in, right? Yes, agreed. Right. Um, it had a few others we had on that 2006 album called All Out. All Out was one. Um, and it had a few others. But from my influence came into Triple K, heavy 2006 and then heavier 2007. 2007 was all about Nada, straight up. That was when I started to implement new new sounds. So it's not just about rhythm, it's about sounds now, the type of tones we use, sign tones, um, synth brass, you know, different synths and different drumming styles and rhythm styles and rhythm patterns and all that kind of thing. Straight from Fifty Loops to the Akai and we mash up the place, you know what I mean? So we did songs like um, Overthrow, Triple K Win. The whole party, everything, you know, we did everything on that album. The Pressure album was... Oh, I love that album. Thank you, thank you. I loved that album. And That's I remember right. saying that to the guys too, that I really loved the album. I think that was the time that, that Triple K was, was moving to, to producing um, the, the type of music that um, you could really start identifying ah, they who they were. So that's, that's all me, you know, you know yes. what I mean? Because Take I don't, no, no disrespect to the, to the guys, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because I know how it is. 
Pressure. Right. That's how we choose. <laughs> yes. It's a thing where the all of what I was working on from before, the Timbaland type of perception of music with the sounds and using all them different um, concepts with rhythms and songs and beats and jamming and all them jams they typically used to be doing at the time and then creative jams, off beat jams, all them kind of things, things that used to be working on the fruity loops, you know what I mean? And when the guys were really open and they just did it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There wasn't any from a station, they loved it. Good. They did it. We worked well together, you know good what I mean? Stuff. I didn't work, it worked, yes. you know what I mean? Yes. That was 2007. That was really a defining year for my music, my ideas, because I see the people just accepted it. You know what I mean? So I was like, boy, that, that work, boy. So it was like a project for me in a sense, because it's a part of my journey. That was the right. That was going to stay, mm -hmm. but we did that. I test sort of stuff, they're like testing ground, you know what I mean? And it worked. And it also helped Chupike develop the style that they have there also, you know what I mean? Because Chupike sounds different from CK. They do, absolutely. Thank you for absolutely. that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for that, you know what I mean? Because it helps define a carve out a niche mm -hmm. for, a for the style. Band. A style, you know, a mm -hmm. style of play, a playing style of feel, you know what I mean? Once yeah. you hear that, you know that is them. I've written some of my computer up to now, right? That I had from ever since 2007, 2008. That were tentative projects for Triple K. That we never end up getting to use them. But if you hear them, you see a straight to Triple K that day. You know what I mean? The way it is. Because that is part of the, the era of what I was going on. That is like a time capsule. Mm -hmm. So it's locking there. So then in 2008, we did more of the same on um, the next album. And then I kind of started to branch out. You know what I mean? Into other Meaning people. you started working with other people. Yeah, absolutely. Other and groups, try other individuals. Because I've got ideas, you know what I mean? Yes. Right. So, I started to do that. We got the opportunity to do it with CK. I have ideas for CK at the same time too because... But how, but, but how was that possible though? How could you... you so you, you, you helped identify or develop a sound that, triple that, that Triple K could be identified with. Right. But at the same time, so you have that sound. At the same time, you were still looking to work with WC? Yeah, because, it, because the music is a journey. It's not a one, one unidimensional thing. Mm -hmm. It's multidimensional, you know what I mean? CK, have, CK is a band that I grew up on. Right? Like I, I was certain soft spot for CK, you know what I mean? And if I get the opportunity to work with CK, in the engine room, I'm going to jump at it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Regardless Which of... Which of the WCKs? Well, at the time... Original or... Well, it wasn't really the original, it was the, the other one. The other WCK. Yeah, the other one. But it's still WCK. Yes. To me, that's how I was seeing it. I was but like, different people though. I mean, to be, to, 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 to differentiate, yeah. it's different different people right, from right. the original the, WCK. WCK new generation. And then the new generation WCK right, is right, a different WCK. Right. So we're talking about the new So you one. want to work with the new generation WC? I want to work with the originals. Okay. Even the Booyo Pioneers. Mm. I really, really want to work with these guys. You still want to work with them? Of course, of course, of course. I feel like I'm getting Booyo Pioneers. Are they aware that you want to work with them? I have expressed that, you know what I mean, in the past. You have. Yeah, but maybe not they take me more serious. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. It's a little more um, <laughs> in, uh, I call it, um, motivation now. Yes. You know what I mean? Like this, I said, the Booyo Right, 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 right. right. But the, with the pioneers, the well with WCK, I always I feel like WCK have a certain type of a style of play, mm -hmm. a certain way that they sound, and I feel like I know it, like know you know, it. because I've been practicing as a child. I see. You know what I mean? I felt like that the, the new CK kind of lost that essence of WCK, the WCK essence that that it used to have in open out. You know what I mean? Like open out, open out. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? What? Right. <laughs> It's like I feel like you know they had a kind of sound that a kind of a feel that I felt that the music it didn't have. They were trying to carve something new, and I was like, no, guys, no, go back to that instead of carving something new because you're trying to reinvent something that is there already. You know what I mean? So that was my whole idea. And my my intention wasn't to stop working with Chubike, You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was going to do them simultaneous, but I really understand. Of, it could have worked. It could have worked. But then you know there's always a conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. So what happened? A conflict of interest. Okay. You know what so I mean? So you stopped working with Triple K? I mean, you know, guys wasn't too happy, I would say. Okay. Because they feel like Dada at the time is their mastermind. Mm -hmm. They want to keep Dada a certain way, but mm -hmm. then Dada have to grow. Okay. So I always see that I, I remember having a discussion with the guys, Joffrey in particular and Benji. 
I am telling them, fellas, when I work with CK, is not a team where I just want to jump a ship. I want to go and work with the pioneers. It will help me to create four triple Ks. Because I feel like Chubike was the, the, the better version. I don't say better version. But Chubike was the 2.0 of WCK. Mm. The next generation. So no matter what, Chubike will be there. You know what I mean? But then we don't want it to be a rivalry, but a continuation, continuity. And That's they've what I'm saying. been there. And I mean, I mean, they're still there. Absolutely. I love Chubike. That's my point. That's my point. You know what I mean? I still love Chubike. It's quite a bounce on Saturday. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? So, right. so that's why I feel like you know it could have worked, but I guess guys wasn't seeing the, the, the vision. Mm-hmm. I felt like I need to go and sit down with Ra, Ra need to talk to me. Let me, Ra and me to talk first and foremost. If I press no key on the keyboard, let me talk. I don't know how you think about music, I don't know how your, you know, your brain working, how it's firing, what you just think of when you hear music. So it, it can help me not to grow because I want to grow, you know, and I feel like Chubike couldn't help me grow. I need to be elders. Ratu me is an is. I don't know if it's elder meaning old. But <laughs> right listening, senior. Sure. Of course, right listening. I've been up right with Ra helped me a lot in music, you know what I mean? So I wanted that knowledge that only Ra and the pioneers could give me, that nobody else could give me. Keith. Keith have a way this plays bass. I wanted to learn that so bad. Oh wow. Even though I cannot play bass, you but I can sing that with a passion like on, no, no. <laughs> Even though I cannot play the bass yet. Because I didn't really practice it, not because I cannot. Okay, but I feel like I could replicate his his um his sound as a producer of music. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So I wanted to learn that so bad, yo. You know what I mean? So I tell the guys, yo, listen. I want to see, not for rivalry reasons, but for knowledge. You know what I mean? Because I, I I like a computer. I want to learn as much as I can to help me to create all these things. So anyway, fast forward that, it didn't work out, so... So, I, so, so wait, so were you left in a situation where you had to make a decision, or you had to make a choice, or did you just not stop working with everybody? Well, the truth is, I didn't, make, I didn't have a chance to make a choice, the guys made it their choice. Who made it their choice? The guys, the, the, the... Which of the bands? Well, remember I was working with CK, yeah? You were not working with CK, but CK didn't give you the opportunity. Well, CK, yeah, the opportunity was there for, for me, for CK. The opportunity yeah, was there. But the guys... The guys of Triple K, they, they, yeah. they were not very happy with no, that. No, they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't give it, they didn't um, entertain it. Okay, so you moved along. They didn't see the bigger picture. So you moved along. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so I jumped back looking with CK. I feel like I wanted to try to implement what I thought could have what CK could be like in my head in the back room of CK, but CK at the time was going through some issues and it didn't work out that way. So I guess that was me having the transition once again now in, on the journey of music to move forward. And then from there, I kind of jumped into, I won't say jump, but the next phase for me, because I felt like that phase was complete. You know what I mean? I tried to CK, it probably didn't work out here, whatever. However, I still get the opportunity to sit down with Keith though, mm-hmm. and we talk, and Keith show me enough stuff, and you know what I mean, like. Did you ever get the opportunity? Yeah, of course. Debate? Yes, of course, of course. Keith right. showed me that you know, Keith was very open. Yes, sir. Yeah, man, yeah, man. Big up Keith. You know what I mean? Ra as well. Ra, Ra taught me a lot. I love Ra. Ra taught I think me. Big Ra is just an amazing guy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very interesting. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, so Ra taught me a lot about what to think when you're doing the music, you know what I mean? Like how he thinks and how the percussions, the importance of the percussions, why this goes that way, that going that way and that kind of thing, you know what I mean? So more of the science and all that kind of thing, I'm learning about it, you know, because what I'm doing is gathering data. I didn't know that at the time, but that's what I was doing, gathering data. So then, after that, I am getting the opportunity to work in Calypso because remember, I still want to brand myself as a producer, not a rhythm man. Mm-hmm. I remember some Calypso and they used to say, Dada, you could say, make and check out the Calypso, you know? And they'll be like, oh man, Dada, never really know what they're making. Mm. I didn't like that, you know what I mean? I said, no, but I understand why they would think that way. I want to change that. So that I did. Got the budget to do with Pat, through Dice. Because Dice is really close, you know what I mean? And uh, I'm married in 2008. Pat gave me a reunion song that he was looking on to do as a test run. Featuring the mask and all stars, Sai, Bob, um, Dai, something, Donnelly. Sorry, excuse me. Um, at the time. So, after that, um, when Pat was very impressed 
with my work and that the really the speed of efficiency, you know what I mean, with my work and the quality and all these things, he tell me that straight. So then he tell me that I know what I can try with some calypso. And then he gave me my first calypso song to work on. My first ever calypso I work on in the big leagues was that song of the Akimo, Looking for Your Pocket, I'll never forget that. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> and the second one I opened the same year was Peter Prosper, Madame Nick. Roosevelt and Collie, I hear all his name Collie, what all you do this time? Right. So that was my second Calypso. <laughs> and then he introduced me to the whole mass camp because Pat was, Pat was, Pat kind of embraced me in a sense and Pat again to me seeking knowledge, teach me a lot of things about the music and all that kind of thing. So I was just, I'm a sucker for knowledge, you know what I mean? So I want to learn as much as I can. So then, yeah, so my first year working on Calypso was a, was a really good one, I guess. Um, I think that your prospect tied with somebody side. For a road match. For a road match, yeah. So my first outing, I got something back. Yes. You know what I mean? So you felt good about that? Yeah, man. Because in Buya, already hard work in Buya, and I get nothing for it up to now. <laughs> And no disrespect to the, to, to the whole guys of Buya, but it just don't have anything for... I mean, it, it's the truth, right? Mm -hmm. you know, let's cut the crap. Excuse my French. But, That's alright. Right. You know, it doesn't have anything for you to go in after. It's just a, a, a very low ceiling kind of thing. So I have to branch out into Calypso and, and that kind of thing. Because Calypso had upward mobility, mm -hmm. which is what I wanted. I want to become better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you wanted to become a bit more diverse. Of course. I want to be a producer. You want to decentralize. You yeah. want to, you know, um, not just be <coughs> Buyo. So, is it, is it that at that time you left Buyo alone for a while? I didn't leave it, but I can't switch focus. I kind of was using the knowledge of Buyo and put it into Calypso. My kind of, so that's why the Calypso kind of changed. If you notice, know, Calypso sounds more like Buyo now, right? Thanks to me, I guess. <laughs> because when I come into the Calypso, I can bring in the same en energy of Buyo or the same science I learned into Calypso with more Buyoized version of Calypso and so on. So yeah, fast forward that 2009, 10, 11, first time I working with the young bull, Mr. Valkovi is tuning right now. Um, we did that song called Bull Matador, which mm -hmm. was a big one for me. It you know, was like, a big yeah. one. It was Very a big, big one. one. Yeah, it was yeah. a big one. Yeah, man. So that was proven to the people, the naysayers that say that I can't make Calypso, that Dada is a powerhouse. So all the guys are making Calypso for 15,000 years. When Dada reached two years, a year, a year, two years, six months, that I really making hits. Which was important for me, you know what I mean? To make songs that, um, songs that could um, that impact the people and the people love it, you know what I mean? And then, and then, and then um, the year after that, I, I, that same year, 2011, I was with Trendsetter and Narin Mufi, who is tuned in, um, on a song called Ready Made Jacket, I which is an interesting song for me, you know what I mean? Because first time I did a kind of calypso like that, that shows the diverse nature of me doing music and other things. 2012 was when I did that song, Pastor Bull. Stand it back on the <laughs> Pray for me. Pray for me. My people listen. Oh, my baby. Forcing me to listen to the music. Only with your confessions. Overdone it. Took my surprise. And competition. He can knock it like the 14 months. In the night. Come on. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. 
<laughs> Pray for me. Good night to you, my dear friend Val. <laughs> so this was your work. So as I said, you know what is happening now? So you're forcing me now to um, not only listen to the lyrics, which is what we listen to. We, we, we yeah. listen to the beats. We enjoy it and we rock to it and so on. But I don't think we pay attention to who put this together, you know, that kind of thing. Who is the behind the scenes person? And all we know is it's a beautiful song. Right. We love rocking to it. We love singing to it. And that's about it. That's it. That's Yes. Because um, I feel like uh, a lot more attention is being placed on what happens behind the scenes now. Mm -hmm. Because of how the world is right now. We want to know who is doing what. What is your role in that project? You know what I mean? So when they, you hear terms like producer, engineer, writers, you know, executive engineers, you hear these terms right now being used a lot. Because of how, um, I guess, like open and detailed people trying to, I guess people trying to know more about the detail of the product, you know what I mean? I guess so you people want to know how to get something to sound good or how to make a hit. So when you, if you want to know how to make a hit song, then you, know, you have to know the formula and it goes back to the same formula, you have to know what happens in the beginning, who did what and all these things, you know what I mean? Who put this part and, you know? Because there's no one-way street to success or to a hit song, it's, there are multiple um, avenues, but it's always different roles and different people, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so on. So people try to know more detail about the industry right now. So yeah, so that was 2012, I did, mean, yeah. And I met some other, I met others in that year too. Yeah, 2012 was the year where I won, well, together in collaboration with DICE, the Calypso Crown. The first time I worked with DICE, um, Calypso we won the crown. The first so, time you worked with it? Yeah. 2012. Yeah, first of all, back to country. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and again, I will keep making mention as the program goes along about winning stuff because I feel like when you win, that's when people notice. But you have to. I don't know what people do. You have way. to. You have to. You have to pay attention. I mean, not when, not when people are losing. I'm not saying that. You know, you you've not been losing, but if you're beginning to win mm -hmm. okay, and succeed, then we need to celebrate that. And and you Absolutely. know, not not and, and and we'll talk about that. You know, as 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 we go along. Um, in the program, we'll talk about some more of your work, but I want to understand a couple of things that when we speak about a producer, mm -hmm. what is a producer? Okay, so a producer can be a producer is a person that puts music together, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So you don't necessarily have to be able to play an instrument. I was so I have that note right. what is the link between being able to play an instrument and being a music producer, someone who makes bits and that? Right. And so a beat, a beat maker is not necessarily a producer, right? But do you need to understand music? What is the link between being a beat maker and um, a, a, a producer? Sorry, a, 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 a beat maker and, uh -huh. and, and someone who plays an instrument. All right. So. Or, or being able to play an instrument. So you play a player, an instrument is a player, an instrument. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's what you use, like you're like a tool. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A beat maker, likewise, is the same thing. You're a tool. A producer is who brings their ideas together. So a producer before, back in the days, would be. A person that would go and get a guitar player from over there and a drummer from over there and this one and that one and bring them together and say, okay, you the guitar man and you play a part that going so -na 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 whatever you know what I mean a little bassy and you play something that going so on. Da -da -da. What happened in your know is that this person is actually making players of instruments play his intellectual property. You know that it comes from his head. He tell you what to do. You know what I mean. So that is his creative right. So he there is the producer of that piece of work. So the, the person not playing the instrument, the keyboard or, or the bass or whatever, the drummer, you're not the producer, you are just a, a tool. Mm -hmm. So you get paid work for hire. Mm -hmm. So you pay you a, a fixed fee or whatever and you know what the business. Mm -hmm. But as far as intellectual property and copyright and all this is where it is going to come back to the person that owns the intellectual property, the person who the ideas come up from his head. You know what I mean? Which is the person that go and get the, 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 the instrument players from various Parts, you know what I mean? So today, in this modern time, where one person can be a producer with a coin people, because he is doing everything on his own. So his intellectual property, he's playing the bass, he's playing the, the guitars, he's playing the whatever, everything. So he is the producer of that record. Also, he can be a beat maker. 
You know what I mean? A beat maker will help you because you don't have to call a beat maker over there. You can beat yourself. You know what I mean? So that's what a producer is. So it's a term that people just mix up when you have a beat and a man that make a beat feel like he's a producer. You know? Yeah, it's a gray area, you know what I mean? I see. Yeah, it's a, cause sometimes not every, I mean, it, I mean, the simplest of the put is like this. Once the intellectual property coming from you, going into that project, then you are the producer of that project. For instance, I don't play bass live. I don't play guitars live. When I work on Calypso or any song, and I need these instruments, I will call my guitar players, and I will tell them what to do. I am the producer, you are working for me. I see. I pay you. I'm understanding. That's right. So you, you, the most you can probably say, you can, in credits, you can say, guitars by X person. Mm -hmm. But you don't see produced by X person, you see produced by me. Because I, I tell you what to do. You know what I mean? So I'll give you a credit for being, putting your labor on the, the credit for your labor, that's all. As far as when we do our split sheets, which is something we should talk about at some point in the program, split sheets for royalties. My name goes down and maybe the writer of the record, the writer of the song, because writing is intellectual property coming from you onto paper or onto your phone or onto the mic. If that's coming from you, that is yours. You own that. That's, that's property like a piece of land. You know what I mean? Right. But if I... Okay, let's put it like this, right? If I say three of us in the room right now. The three of us. Right. And I have, a, I have a rhythm that I come with. I already produce the rhythm. And then we go to write a song. You, know, you start writing this song, and you know, and then she now come, she put parts in it. You all need to decide how you are going to split that um, the the um, shares of that um, production that work because she she wants an idea come from somebody. They are entitled to a share. You know what I mean? That's how it is. So me now as a producer, I come in 50% already, I tell you it's straight, that's how I work. I'm the producer, I am entitled to 50% because that's how I do my business. It doesn't have to go that way, can go, we can share it various ways, but I feel like I bring half of the song already. You know what I mean? So you do the rest, you write the lyrics. I will always say, you know what, even if I put a word in there or a hook, because I put a hook there, I want 5% more. So I want 55% more. And then people say, but that are you greedy? You no, know, it's not greedy. Is what you are entitled to, what your efforts are in that project. So the thing that we need to understand, like, and that's another part of the conversation that we'll get to, understanding music copyright and all the priorities. And... So, so a producer, as you explained, I understand clearly what it is and the difference between a producer and, and a beat maker. A beat maker. So right. that is that is clear. Let us talk a bit about the creative process. Right. How does it happen? Because you're not a musician. I am. You're not, a, you don't, you're not an I'm instrument not a live, player. I'm not a live player. You're not a live yeah. instrument player. Yeah. Let us talk about the creative process. So how does that sit in this room, um, wherever it is located now, right. and um, and come up with, with, with whatever it is he comes up with, he produces the creative process? Well, before... And I, I hope it's not a secret. <clears throat> no, man, I can give you the formula right up. I hope it's okay, because they're not me. I do know I do because I'm you. <laughs> right? So it's like this, right? So it's like, I doesn't, there, there is no one way to create it. There's many ways, right? So you know, what I just do sometimes, I would have an idea, I may be traveling, maybe I'll be traveling or something, the airport, and then I see something, or I hear a sound, or I hear someone on the radio, or I hear someone in the airport, or wherever you are, you hear something inspire you to do something else. You know what I mean? And that is creation right there. Can so, I dress inspire of you course, to make a beat? Of course. Or to create something? You know how I'm feeling. You know what I mean? It could be... For instance, there's always a need. See, the music business is about need, you know, satisfying needs and wants, right? And that's very important. That's a very important point. I would like the artists or whoever listening to take note of these things. The music business is about needs and wants, <laughs> just like any other business. You don't create in isolation. You create for a purpose. You know what I mean? So our job is to create. Our, our creation needs to be utilized. You know what I mean? So we don't make a song because... We just want to be creative to make a song. For instance, look at all of the back in the seventies and so A lot of songs just coming out about hurt and heartbreak. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Heartbreak and all these things and, and, and that kind of thing. 
And also in the 70s and the 80s, well, the, 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 the day, there's a saying that the 70s and 80s are the two most creative eras of music in, in, in music history. Mm -hmm. 70s and 80s, because the 90s and the 2000s are just repli re, um, replicating what happened in these times, right? So, what you find happening there now is that people were just learning the audience, like you go for a heartbreak, your boyfriend leave you, your girlfriend leave you, you have a problem, boy, I write a song about that, yeah. My boyfriend leave me and leave another woman and da 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 da, whatever you put it. You know what I mean? And then you make it uh, in, in a sensational type of way so that they can feel what you're saying. You listen to Celine Dion, all of love songs in a ballad, mm -hmm. and then you feel her because she is trying to satisfy that want and that need. Relatability. Relatability. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So she's satisfying that right there. You know what I mean? Whether she go through the most heartbreak, no. She's just a musician that job is to produce music, and that's what she does. You know, so her clients or I never her fans, that way. Yeah, it's a business. It's a B O S I N E S S. First and foremost. Hmm. Because that's why there's so much broke musicians, you know. Broke musicians, they don't look at music as a business. They look at music as talent. Rich musicians look at music as business. That's it. That's how it goes. You know what I mean? So, you know, people like Celine Dion, Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston, very good. All of the, even the male guys, the yeah, um, Elton John, Elton John. Collins. So, yeah, they, so they are just trying to fill a void. You go for a heartbreak and you now can express that heartbreak in your own way. Maybe you have a deep voice like Barry White. You know what I mean? And he gets him from his baritone mm -hmm. vocal. You know what I mean? Being low, deep, you know what I mean? So you express it in your own way. If you notice this new guy, I can't remember his name right now, but I think he has one of the most popular wedding songs. It's not Ed Sheeran. Is Ed Sheeran? Ed, it must be him. Right. Ed Sheeran has a song. Um... That what the people always do for their wedding, I think. And then it reminds me of that song of um, Tell me how am I supposed to live without you? <laughs> yeah, it, it sounds just like that, you know what I mean? And that's the reason why, um, it, another um, fun fact um, these guys always replicate what they hear in the 80s. That's why, right now, um, was Marvin Gaye, they replicate all from people like Marvin Gaye, so that's why Marvin Gaye's. Um, children suing. suing them all the time. That's right. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> they're trying to replicate what I was there before. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. So, going back to the whole thing about perfect. business. Perfect. Somebody says the name of the song is perfect. Perfect. That's what we're looking for. That's it, I right there. I think we have it right there. Yeah. Yeah, we're playing a little, a little bit of, of, of whatever it is that we're talking about. Yeah. Let's see if that's the one you're referring to. That's it? You tell me. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's only him. Not that one. Another one here, yeah, really popular. How many billion views? The one. It must be the one before that. Yeah, it must the be the one before, that. before yeah, that. Yeah. Yes, but we're talking. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Because what them guys doing, Ed Sheeran not trying to sit down and be creative, you know. He's that's not his job. His job is to just be Ed Sheeran, mm -hmm. be a face, be mm -hmm. a product. The, the writers call him to the studio. He doesn't even know about this. The writers, producers create the record for him. He come and he learn the record. That's it. And you see him? That's it. He don't add it, remove. That's not his job. It's a job. His job is to be Ed Sheeran, the product. Which the label he signed to probably owns part of that product. Ed Sheeran. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can recall Prince had a problem, had an issue with his label, um, Warner Chapel. Warner. Warner. Yeah. I think it's Warner, yeah. Ready and he was trying to get out of his contract and he couldn't use his name Prince. He couldn't use his name, you know, his name is Prince. He couldn't even use it. He had to use a symbol. Kind of That's correct. A symbol. <laughs> yeah, because he wasn't entitled to that. Because they own it until he was out of the contract. Wow. Then he could start using his name Prince. You see, it's property, it's a business. Right? <laughs> So yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is a very interesting um, part of the music, of music. You want to be um, successful in music, mm -hmm. you have to bump to look at music. Mm -hmm. as a we were talking about the whole creative process. Right, so the creative process now, so you can intellectual or ideas come from anywhere. So for me, it, it, it comes from, and I guess that that's how it's straight, in a sense. Which is a good street. It's okay. It's a good street. <laughs> right? So for me, I make music. I look at the market. 
and I look at what there's a void for, mm -hmm. and I try to fill that void. You know what I mean? Because for me, music is not about talent. I know I am talented already. I know that. Okay? Yes, I know I am good. I know that. That I'm good, yes, you know it already. Right now, telling that I would do mean nothing in the world of music, in the music business, that I have to produce and create. That's how it goes. You know what I mean? So, for me, it is my responsibility to create music for me to develop my career. Career goes with business. You don't need a career for a hobby. Career goes with business. A business term, career. Music career is business. You know what I mean? So, um, right. So, having said that, so for me, I look at you know the market and if there's a void for certain things and um, I just try to fool to to fill that void you know what I mean so as a producer I wouldn't be necessarily uh, um, on the writing end but as far from on the end of sound because I don't only produce boo I also produce soccer you know what I mean I used to do dance all before and um, I used to dance all before but I kind of cool off on the whole dance sort of thing because music is very territorial, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I don't want to have to be second class to Jamaicans and their dance hall. They always see that as a person that's not a Jamaican, you know what I mean? And because of that, uh, you know, that is a difficulty in a sense. So I figure uh, best I stay in a market that can help me to achieve the same thing. That's where Soka comes in. Right. Soka is important in there because Soka you now we as Dominican people have uh, we are invited into the soca world as well. We have an invitation as Caribbean people. We are welcome as brothers, so we can contribute equally to like Trinidad or anywhere else. So I want to use that. My goal is to use that opportunity or that avenue to get on the world stage because soca is massive, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I've been doing. So for me, you know, I look at all the wants and the needs, and, the, and I look at also the the um, the trends. Of soca, where it's going and where I think it should be going, and whatever I think now is my opinion, mm -hmm. right? And it's also what I think I should be doing because it will be a difference. So, if I think soca should go this way, instead of I say it, I have to go and create it. You know what I mean? And the, the artists in the industry doesn't necessarily mean that because I did soca music, I have to run to trend to be able to get an artist. But there are also artists around here that I use and have used before to, um, to execute. You know these um these concepts. For instance, too greedy. I am not doing the track with too greedy called Hangover. Yes, Hangover. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> that was me trying to understand the appetite of the soca market. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that song was the result of that song was very encouraging. I like that song. Absolutely, that song was massive. You know what I mean? Um, it gave us it gave us a lot of recognition in the in the soca world. We want to know where that song come out and. Who's singing it and who produced it and all these things people are always trying to know, you know what I mean? So it kinda of, that's where it kinda of, the fire started there mm -hmm. to pursue the soca market. So for me that's been created from you know answering the question. I create based off a need. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But is this is this a particular something that works for you more than anything else? Um I will say because of my background in music coming from the Buyo and all that kind of thing, it helps it helped me to create a sound for myself, you know what I mean? So I remember talking to Lyrical you know, some time ago, and Lyrical was saying me that, um, um, Lyrical was, was saying to me that, um, that my sound is unique, nobody has a sound like that, that's before we did the family show. Mm -hmm. You know, he was saying me that even when I do the groovy, it still sounds different like a bouillon, you know, like, and to me, it doesn't sound like at all, mm -hmm. but the way they hear music is different, you know, as a trini. Hear new music different, you know what I mean? So you're like, boy, that you have a new kind of a sound that people still going to start rushing you for that, you know what I mean? So he saw the um, potential of what the song was and what I was looking at, and what is happening. And what is happening now? Yeah. We, 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 you've done some work with some other folks in the region, but let us let us move forward, and we'll talk about those as well in a while. Right. But let us let us let us um um, um move to. What is happening now, right. and um, and and we're talking about this this particular tune right here, and we're going to talk about how this came about, right. and um, what is happening as a result, and what the future looks like as a result. Right, right. <laughs> By the way, I really really like uh, Skinny's 
rusty. Yeah. <laughs> the voice on this one Great. Great. is like deep, and you know, Great. Great. this is one of the biggest songs in the world yeah, right the now. Biggest. Tell us, tell us what is going on with the track before we we, we get into the background. Number one on iTunes. Number one on iTunes. Radio one hundred. If you like number one on all charts, because people keep on selling charts from all over the region, mm -hmm. right? all over the world, as a matter of fact. And it's number ones, you number know what I mean? Ones. Number ones, it's a host of number ones, and it's a, <laughs> it's a blessing, you know. Of course, yeah. it is indeed a blessing, and this one, of course, produced by you. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of reaction to this one, Crazy. a lot, a lot of reaction. And let us talk before we get into the reaction aspect of it. Um, help us understand how this came about, how this collaboration um, or this partnership right. um, came about. So I was in St. Lucia in November last year doing a course called the Business of Music course. And um, so I met with International Stephen, who is a guy that I worked with before. Um, International Stephen is the, he used to be one of Marshall's DJs. Um, they also run the Hollywood Carnival together and things. So, um, so Stephen always interested in my work, you know what I mean? Like, he always feel like, just like Lyrical, that I have a kind of song that is unique and nobody has that, but they want, he feel like we need to exploit it, you know what I mean? So he like, he almost like a middleman. So he, he now facilitated the project. So he was like, okay, daddy, you know what? I need something from you. I need that kind of unique you stuff. And I went to pitch the skinny and we, we need something big from that. So that's what happened. So I saw the St. Lucia I that rhythm, right? And yeah, in St. Lucia, my hotel room, that's when that rhythm was born. You know what I mean? And um, so I gave it to, to Stephen. Stephen gave so you know that already makes it regional. Yeah, because see where it happened? It's, it's right. see where it was created. Right, right. <laughs> so yeah, so Stephen gave it to, to skinny. Skinny reached out to me because me and skinny have our history. You know what I mean? Of working together, sort of, in a sense, at that time. You know what I mean? <laughs> you gave me that story. Right, right. You know what I mean? So yes. he knows that very well. You know what I mean? You beat him. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You beat some who's already. <laughs> so he, I guess he always had a need, he always had a need or a, a desire to work with me. You know what I mean? But then I guess the opportunity presented itself then. So he linked me instantly and told me, yo, you see that reading the hair I'm sick. You know what I mean? And he told me you gotta do something big on it. Two, a day after, Skinny sent him back demos. A day after? A day after, yeah, he sent back demos. And he was on tour, eh? Mind you, he was on tour. And he started sending back demos with the song, and he recorded the entire song the, 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 the day after that. Mm -hmm. Because he wrote the song. Mm -hmm. He wrote it. Yeah, he himself. himself wrote the song. Okay. He wrote the concept of it was from Marshall and Bungie. So then he sent it to Marshall after Marshall approved 100. Marshall even said that if you wanted to go record it tonight. You know what I mean? Because sure your Marshall was excited about it. From instant, from the time Marshall heard it, Marshall was all systems go. Let's do it. He ready. Then, so we Marshall did his parts. And then they sent it to me. And, um, then I had to set it up, you know what I mean, arrange it, fix it up, start to work on a mix, and all that thing. And then I, after I did my first mix, I sent it back to them with just Marshall and Skinny, and they said to Bungie. But Bungie already agreed to do the project, but then I sent it to him to do the recording, and then Bungie loved everything that was happening, and Bungie wrote his own verses, because Bungie is a lyricist, that's what he does, that's what he does, his product is lyrics. You know what I mean? So he will... I, he wouldn't use another person's lyrics in a sense. Oh. You know what I mean? Because he has his product is lyrics. Like if you're selling bread, you you don't bring bread from. Mm -hmm. I don't bring bread for bring you, right? Bread, yes. Right. It doesn't make any sense. Also, and Bungie kind of comp. But is Bungie's a genius, you know? Because Bungie com Bungie's verses completed the track. It made the track whole. You know what I mean? Nothing about what skinny had before wasn't good, but it's mm -hmm. like Bungie's the, the angle he took. What well, just completed the concept. You know what I mean? And then after that, they sent me all of the vocals. By that time, I was back in Dominica and I have a bomb on my computer. Ready to explode. And me alone have to have that bomb. I'm trying to contain myself because I have Marshall Montana. You know, I should listen to Marshall Montana, me alone in the studio, listening to Marshall singing on my rhythm. You know? 
listening to him alone like I'm soloing his vocal. And I say, yes, boy, you know, I, I finally get it, boy. Marshall on my rhythm. That's the Marshall, the pinnacle of that thing. And it finally happened. So I was excited. I was in all kinds of feelings, I tell you. But most importantly, I learned to be a professional. Mm -hmm. Put feelings aside and emotion. And the objective for me in particular is to create a hit out of that. I don't want any regular hit. I want to make a statement for Marshall Montana to come back. That's right. That's double M, you know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I, my, my thing was I always wanted to have them. Um, if I could give them one of the biggest songs they ever had. That has always been the way I looked at that project. And you did that. <laughs> it's the energy. Oh my God. You know what I mean? So, yeah, so then, and also working with Gallon too because it's like, you know, working with Bungie, like, I always a huge fan of Bungie from ever since he took one of days and, and thing and yo, I was a, always a major fan of Bungie. And to see that I have Bungie Gallon's vocals on my computer, it's like, boy, that computer, after when I finish that, I can yeah, frame I'm that, sure. and frame that computer, <laughs> and put it on top of this studio, like, also keep with the computer, is this bike, on top of his um, bakery. <laughs> and I'm not the same thing. <laughs> yeah, boy, it's a little real thing, because, boy, I, I, that was crazy, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because growing up, listening to, to Marshall, and see Marshall all that fantastic work, you know what I mean? I'm a huge fan of them, and to get the opportunity to open them like that, it was just, it, it, one thing he showed me that, now is it time. Yes. For all what I've been working on for all these years and all of the pain and disappointment and all these things, now is the time. Mm. You know what I mean? Redemption now. Yes. In the thing. You know what I mean? So I'm going to give it to them. Ah, so I hope that. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. <laughs> I work it. I work it. And you know, interestingly, what happened now, I, I don't know if they might try and test me or something, but they might want to me up all the time. Because Marshall was in China. Marshall went to China to do a show. Some so some kind of concert where he was the only artist from the Caribbean there, whatever. And Bungie was in, in Bermuda, Skinny was in New York, and so guys in different time zones. And me have to stay up every time. So three o'clock in the morning we'll sleep like up. Mm -hmm. Because Marshall sending a message saying, um, put that up a little louder. Mm -hmm. oh, you know what I mean? That's something good. I like it, I like it. You know what I mean? I was just having a sip of water because really, you say it just like it was. Yeah. I remember Bungie, you know, that always part of the, you know, the fun process. Bungie, when I, I sent a version for, for Bungie and he was like, listen, he said, my love voice was saying, listen, right? You had him two other man at the front there, like as if they run in the show and I, I, it's like I had a back of the bus trying to call people. You know what I mean? So, bring, yo, bring up my vocal, right? Yeah, it sounds very good, but just give me a bring me at the front there too. It was all like a little fun experience of working with them, man. They've been very humorous and they, as a, for a person that they never really worked with before, mm -hmm. they trusted me to do that. You know what I mean? Again, too, it could be because I, I was doing something before called building equity. In the business by working with people in the region and winning yes. titles because mm -hmm. it is it's important to win when you win people notice you you know what i mean and they value they notice your work i have seen bungee gallon talking about my song you know it's me do it before somebody went to come on and he told me how oh, that song bad and think it's my song because mm -hmm. when i tell him that he tell me but wow you can't tell me that you know what i mean but i don't feel like everything has its time for it to happen you know what That's i mean right. right so i was building equity so when the name Dada come and say Dada, I remember when we finished arranging the track and I finished editing the track, they asked me, who does my mixing? I said, I do my mixing. They're like, okay, cool. Well, start to mix. Start to mix. Yeah. And okay. that was a test. How long did it take for this project to fall in, fall in for it to bake, for it to cook? A week. A week. Yeah. You, you know, kind of, the thing is, initially, the someone was supposed to come up and at the time it came out, it was coming later than this month, right? Mm -hmm. But then they may decide that well, that is going to be their New Year's release. And it's almost nowhere close to being ready. That was the Friday before the New Year's. I was like, what, boy, this one's already yet, no, boy, and I just wanted to get a quality time. So I had a few other projects on my, on my schedule for the weekend, I canceled all. I decided I'm going to put in all of the effort to get that song, and that's all important for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's why they cancel all my schedules. I didn't go anywhere. I wanted to go to a few of the affected you know, I couldn't go because I was priorities. Priorities, right? Yeah. Right, right. Who released it first? 
released? Yes. Mm, who, it? who released it first? Marshall. Where was it first launched? Where was it first introduced to the world? Well, the concept was this, right? It's like, I wanted that song to release first in Dominica. Right. And it was yeah, we, we're going to come to the Dominican piece as right, well. Right. That was the initial um, concept. Because there was a few shows going on. I think there was a show, the Inception show, mm -hmm. going on the New Year's morning, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I was talking to a few of the DJs, a DJ Spawner, and then telling them, listen, I have a bomb that I want you to premiere. First time ever in the world. I'm not going to, something that's going to happen and so on. So I was kind of hyping them up for it. I tell them who it was. That's the first time I disclosed to people mm -hmm. what I was hooking on. was DJ Spawner and DJ Snow and, um, and Mystic. Yeah, Mystic. But the Mystic show was the day after, you know what I mean? It was, it was the next show. But I wanted to premiere first in Dominica. But then we never get the track finished. Because, you know, when I thought the track was finished, the New Year's morning, I cannot sleep. Because every minute, I try to take a little doze off. My phone ringing because we have a, a WhatsApp group, right? And when they send a message on me, I realize I don't respond, they call in. That I sleep, you know what? You know what I mean? And that happened for the whole day, like for the rest of that the week, that's what it was. So we didn't get to release it that time. So when it was finally finished Friday, the Friday of that week, first week of um, January, yeah. it was released at 4 p.m. Friday afternoon. And I didn't sleep that whole week. Where was it released? In the world. It was released in one particular place. Mystic had it. I gave it to Mystic, I gave it to all the guys around that time, it was 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. 4 p.m. Okay. But then that time, Mystic show finished already. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't have bust it. Okay. Right. But it get bust in the world at that time. That's when the first flyer came out at one o'clock Friday afternoon. And then from the time people saw my logo on there, my phone started to go crazy. Mm -hmm. People couldn't believe it. I guess some WhatsApp message people just couldn't believe it. It's like that you that thing. What are I see Marsha Bosa thing there. It's like that, you know. I see Marsha Bosa thing there. I see that down there. You I see yeah, yes. even what you what you keep my You said to be excited, you know what I mean? And then when the song came out of seven track, fire, fire the world over. I yeah. saw videos of people in Australia, mm -hmm. all over the Everywhere, world, New Zealand. New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. So while the song was gathering all of this hype, and you know, everybody was all excited about it on the local scene, mm -hmm. we, 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 we had some mixed reactions. And um, you had a situation where people were saying that you would one, you were not getting the, rec the recognition, Booyah was not getting the recognition, and that I had sold out the Booyah. Well, for the first issue that you were playing there, I wouldn't say that I wasn't getting the recognition at all. That I was always getting the recognition, that his logo is big and bold on that. Marshall Montana do owe that and nothing to come and say specifically that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. He doesn't do it for precision, he doesn't do it for Travis Hill. You don't do it for anybody else, well, you have to do it for me. Mm -hmm. You know, specifically, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But my logo is on there, my name is on the product. You know what I mean? As a producer of it. You know what I mean? So, that part, I don't really catch that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That is kind of something. So, you understand. feel and you're satisfied of with course. the recognition and the acknowledgement you're because getting. Because you see, what the thing is, right? For that first point, for that first issue there, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about still. You see, we, we, we need to, un Dominicans need to understand how music business works in Papa Bojie. It's not about emotion and feeling and all these things. That are, music business is not about emotion and feelings, it's about business. Dada, music, Dada is a producer. When Dada and get attached to a record like that, people are going to reach out to Dada because people know how that, how that works. Okay? That's how it is. Now, to me, exactly what was supposed to happen, happened with that. The moment this song came out, people from all over the world started hitting me up. My, I get 500 new followers on Instagram the same day. The same day, I get 500 new followers on Instagram. And, and up to now, I still get them on Instagram and Facebook and all these things. You know what I mean? So, because my, my brand is attached to it. It's a branding thing. You know, like, you know I'm going to come and talk about that specifically. That is part of the project, is five of us. Myself, Marshall, Bungie, Skinny, and International Steven. Steven is the middleman there, you know what I mean? I even heard, I even heard some ridiculous, stupid kind of comments about it's not Dada that do it, it's Steven. Rubbish. Imbeciles would make such a statement, you know what I mean? 
you produce your work. <laughs> I mean, you know this about the modern people are making them sick when they people that know that I as what and they know my and my, your capability. Yeah, they know it to say such a kind of thing. Sure, I just. But okay. anyways, you know what I mean. Next. Right, right. So then we were we were hearing that um, there was a there was a there was a suggestion for the 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 the, the, the sound to be named Sokabuyo. But that didn't come through, and as a result, um, Buyo was not getting the due recognition. Once again, no. What happened now is our people now have a tendency not to jump the gun. We like to jump the gun quick, quick, quick in Dominica, like we we be too busy to mash up somebody. Hmm. We are busy, 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 busy to kill somebody. That's what we are. We don't want to build our people. That's why they start saying about it's not me that doing. They couldn't believe that I do something like that. And I come into that whole soca and branding thing. So I must say that part first, it will come to it, right? It's okay. transition. Okay. They couldn't believe, they couldn't fathom that. Uh, you start using some big terms now I, that they can't understand. They couldn't fathom that, that Dada could do such a thing that they have been trying to achieve for all these times. Totally ignoring the fact that Dada has been building equity in the business that would have happened eventually. You know what I mean? Anyway, having said that, branding the music, Buyo Osoka. Now, again, jumping the gun. I hear some people say that, you know, <laughs> that they try to thief. Yo, don't make let me tell you something. Close all your mouth. Because when all you say stuff like that, people hearing all the outside there. What all you doing now, instead of all you feel like protecting your music, what all you doing now is trying to make people blacklist with your music. Because people trying to just partake in the style of music. People are trying to partake. Nobody trying to thief, quote unquote, anything. But when uh, the likes of Marshall, Montano, and Bungie Garden, the two biggest entities in the music, utilize the product with your countryman, right? And you all never call him on his phone and ask him a question. You know, the same people, the perpetrators, all that kind of a rubbish, that absolute, I don't know what term to give it because there's no term worthy of descript, describing the kind of a thing that them fellas was doing. You know what I mean? Trying to slander me and the rest of the guys. What happened is this. Buyo is Buyo. Dominica is a land of Buyo. That can never change. Never. Nobody is trying to change it either. Double M is a. If you notice, Marshall works with what works. Marshall is a businessman. Marshall has time to sit down and think of, oh, I feel like this, I feel like that. No, Marshall works with what works. Dada was able to bring forth. Something of that magnitude with Marshall and the rest of you guys. And Marshall see that as an opportunity to welcome Dominica officially as part of the fraternity. But some naysayers, a few, just a few, mm -hmm. with their mouth going faster than their brain. You know what I mean? They were too fast to jump the gun and talk the puppy show. Some people even go as far as tagging Marshall Bungie and Skinny Fabulous oh, no. in a thing on, on Instagram saying about massive controversy in Dominica. I said, oh, get my life, Lana. But they look sick. What they're trying to do, they say they love Buyo. You, you love Buyo, you want to stay in Bath Estate? Hmm. You don't want Buyo to become worldwide, you don't want to become international, you want to stay in Roseau? You, if, you, if you really love Buyo, let the music go, let the music breathe, let the music grow. Let it grow, Budgie. Marshall and the man helping to grow him. Buyo has never experienced that form of growth before, period. Fact. I beg somebody to dispute that. Where, where else has Buyo get a number one internationally? Fact. I beg somebody to dispute that. Where? Never have it been done before. But man just running them out talking, talking so. So you're going on now. The objective was this, right? Soka is... 
Right now, there's a push to get soca internationally recognized as a genre mm -hmm. by the Grammy Academy right. internationally. You know what I mean? Because it still falls on the reggae. Exactly. Reggae. Okay. How can soca fall on the reggae? <laughs> because the reason they put it like that is because we all sound alike, and if you get from the Caribbean, mm -hmm. so yeah, you're in that bracket. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But you know it's not. I mean? Reggae is reggae, soca. Right. So, 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 so uh, we know that. Yeah. But the guys at iTunes don't know that. They don't care. They only care if. The only thing that these guys are interested in is numbers. They're interested in the metrics of that game. It's a business. They don't care what, how you feel. Their job is on you. want to sit on with Spotify and iTunes. And you don't tell them, okay, I want Buyo. I want Buyo. Okay, I want Buyo. I want to be behaving malakase. Like how Dominicans, well, some, a few of them must be behaving very malakase. You know when you bring a child somewhere and embarrass you? That's what happened, you know. They want to embarrass their self, you know. The reason why we looking to brush it aside is because we have a massive number one. Yes. But if this song was a quote-unquote flop, mm -hmm. forget Booyah, forget the idea, you know? Forget the idea. They may not want to Booyah again because Domin the Dominican people in general, because Dominican people generally are supporting. But a, couple, a handful. But a few of the people in the fraternity of music were very mal casse with their behaviors and then from there now it kind of feed, the people kind of feed off of that kind of thing and they realize whoa because that that I do that for true they put on chicken that you know but they realize what and it's true so they, they call it mass hysteria you know what I mean so that's what happened mal casse behavior that was the embarrassment but anyways we're looking at the positive vibe mm -hmm. massive number one so anyway now what happened now is this because of Booyah now being a facet of soccer, mm -hmm. whether Dominicans like it or not, just like Jab Jab, just like Ring Bang in um, Barbados, the style that Burning Flames is doing in Antigua, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. saying kids in Virgin Islands and thing, Booyah is just one of those. Okay. Whether the people in the fraternity like it or not, Dominica don't have the numbers to so can even have the numbers even if they have all of the islands playing soca music and branded as soca so look at Dominica with 70,000 people how on earth Dominica will get um, will to be branded like that you know what I mean so that happened solely because of that reason because I had up, I, as Skinny Fabulous said in the interview I was pushing for the whole branding Buyo soca thing mm -hmm. and that kind of thing you know what I mean because I, I know the how it works I know yes. the business works right so part of the plan was Exactly what happened. After this song came out, we would go to Trinidad and push the whole concept of Buyo, Dominica, da 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 da. You check what I'm saying? Dominica would have gotten, well, still getting the massive recognition from that. That is the plan. But again, nobody asked me a question. You keep saying nobody asked you a question. So throughout all of this, since this song has, uh, has, has been released, nobody has called to have a conversation. No. I came to see you. I said, I just want to have a conversation yeah. with you before we even do the well, show. You did that. Let's have a chat. I came here. Yeah. I sat in your studio. I had a chat with you. Yeah. Are you telling me that we have not made contact with you to, 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 to find out what happened, how this came about, what's right, the plan, right. what's the objective? How can we ride on this wave? How can we benefit from this? To be honest, to be honest, um, there have been a few people that reached okay. out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't want to put a blanket statement on this and nobody. When I say nobody, I mean nobody in the fraternity. See. Okay. In the music fraternity in Dominica, Richard. Wow. Especially those they're more friend faster than the brain to put all kind of a thing on social media. Those there. You know what I mean? Especially those there. They didn't ask the question, they have them on WhatsApp. They know to reach in for other things. They did not reach in for that. Instead, tantrums left, right, and center. Mm -hmm. Foolish behavior. You've been accused of selling out the booyah as a result. <laughs> booyah to sell. But you have to sell. What product that doesn't sell? Any other product that sell in Dogwood, you know? I, I'm a businessman, you know? I'm a music entrepreneur. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. Right? Music has to sell. When I go and I need a keyboard, don't make to make keyboard. When I go to New York, I go by Sam Ash, a musician from wherever, and I can buy a keyboard in the store. And I bring it back to Dominica, right? I buy a Dominica to make computer. After I order a computer or buy it in a foreign, right? It has to sell. 
do you think do you think that in any way and, and again we're talking about the buyo and the identity of the buyo do you think this is going to affect the the, 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 the identity of the buyo in any way in terms of breaking it down or um, it being stolen it can, know, it can be stolen because the thing is right there's a uh, people that think that the music is being stolen is just insecure you know what I mean is a dominant I'll stop saying dominant the little handful of people that may try to make controversy with that. Their fear is not that the music is going to be stolen. Let me tell you what the problem is. Da, da, do it. That is the problem for them. And I don't know when you come and tell me what they think. I know what I know because I have experience with every one of them. I have my personal experiences. I know how people think. I know how they think. If it was they were the ones that do it, ah, but Jay, Papa, God, they will call it so, they will call it this, that, they will call it dirt. It wouldn't matter. No. But because it's that, that, tag it on his back, boom, 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 try and make a controversy. But anyways, that I don't check for them thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That I keep in the vibe positive because why? That I know the mission. Mm -hmm. You keep on the mission. I'm not talking about your spiritual aspect because the thing, mm -hmm. I am bigger than all the foolishness. That's why all of the controversy going on on Facebook and people telling me left, right, and center in their rubbish nonsense, papi shows, zez, zez, bagay, they are on Facebook. I never once commented on them thing because it doesn't make any sense. And, Look, I, that noticed, was my brand. and I actually said that to you. I, t I, 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 I remember having a conversation with you and saying that I noticed that with everything that was going on on social media, you never commented. Yeah, what I noticed you were doing, in fact, was sharing yeah. the the positives, yeah. and, you know, the damage the song yeah, was causing absolutely. in the positive way, yes. that kind of thing. So yes. I really did notice that as somebody who was watching from the sideline, because I never commented on this, I think I just put one post just when I heard Skinny right, Fabulous, right, right. Mm -hmm. you know, try to to clarify the whole situation. And that's why Skinny called. You know. As a matter of fact, people don't know the kind of club that are having the business now, you know. You know, I called Skinny, I said Skinny, Skinny, listen, right? Yesterday you went on the you did two radio show um tours Tuesday and Wednesday Saturday and I spoke to him Wednesday I, I the same Tuesday I told him I need you to call on the radio on Mystic Show mm -hmm. on the Wednesday he was like okay he's going to England on that day if I don't know to do a show so you'll be able to call at that time for so Wednesday really good but Saturday for sure mm -hmm. you could do it that's a plan yeah. because the the, the, the concept the vision of that project is not by any means to neglect Dominica. It's to rope Dominica in, make but Dominica be saying. a part of. Let's ride on this way. Absolutely, you know Let's what I mean? Let's ride on this way. So the, he had to, he, it was always a plan for him to call and talk about he, um, his admiration for Dominica and Buya music and da da da. It was always part of the plan. He's been here. He has of course, the, in the park, right? And he also surprised me because yeah, okay. I also saw him as this. You know, I've never seen him perform before, and did, I remember him doing his um his, his sound check the night before. He was just there, you know, just cool, calm, and, and you know, just right, doing his thing. But him. when the guy came on the stage, the guy just exploded. Yeah, transformed. You know, he really, really yeah, exploded, and I was, you know, seeing is crazy. So it was part of the plan though, you know what I mean, for to make Dominica and Dominica Carnival. It's not just about Dominica and you know, the carnival as well. To endorse the carnival, to endorse the product in Trinidad. Because Trinidad, I don't know if is the mecca for the music. Trinidad coming like New York City or Hollywood. You know, if you want to be an actor, you have to go to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. If you want to be, be involved in music and have a career in music, you have to go to either LA, Hollywood or New York. It is what it is. Trinidad is the New York of the business. It's not about going to train with your thing and take your no, that is stupid thinking, no job. People need to stop thinking like that. You go to train that because of what train that can do. When you go to train that, VH1 sees you, MTV sees you, everybody sees you in train that to be able. That's why everybody goes to train that. People don't want to train that because they don't have a choice or because train that they're not forcing themselves. No. You see what has been in train that carnival? Will Smith. Nicki Minaj. You don't see what that video Cardi B. You see Marshall bring them at Marshall Mondays. You know, that's what you see Marshall just reading a song with Ashanti. It's that today. Exactly, you know what I mean? It's bigger than the kind of small peanut brain kind of a thing that some guys in the fraternity are trying to take it as something that is negative. So where do we go from here? Do you, uh, will we see other uh, uh, collabs like that? Will we see um, uh, other productions using the bouillon? 
genre, you know, in terms of producing. Absolutely. Yeah. Because Bouillon gave them the biggest number one of their careers. Right? And you cannot go against the numbers. Right? The Bouillon give guys the biggest number one mm-hmm. of their career. I mean, I'm not saying that Marshall never hits. Marshall always hits. Mm-hmm. That's how he stays fresh. Marshall knows the game. He knows the science. But he never had a number one on iTunes. That's a first for him. I see. First for Bungie as well. First for Skinny Fabulous. First for me, obviously. First for Dominica. First for Soka. First for Caribbean music, apart from reggae. It's our first. That's a, That's historic. You know what I mean? So, having said that, you know what I mean? We can only look towards the positives and dive more into the why, what is the significance of that number one? What can I do for us? as industry practitioners, what does it mean for Caribbean music, what does it mean for Answer Dominica? Answer those questions. Right. So, the thing is, there's been a struggle going on. If you notice, I don't know if you notice, but in, on, on those reggae charts, on those charts, it's like, it's dominated by Bob Marley and Shaggy and, and them guys, right? Even Jamaican reggae artists having problems to top that chart, you know? The chronics, they have it's difficult for them to top the charts. I'm not saying they're not on the charts, they are mm-hmm. on the charts. But to top it, and that song, which is not even a reggae song, came in just a matter of days to reach number two, and then number one, you know what I mean? That, that's, that's unheard of. You know what I mean? So what that is, is that it also shows, there's a, an, an organization called IFPI, International Federation for, I can't remember the exact thing, but IFPI. And what they do is that they study metrics of um, consumption of music. You know what I mean? So, um, the significance of the ISP, you know, is to pay attention to that spike that comes from the Caribbean. It's a spike, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That song created a spike. And um, in terms of streaming, downloading, and that kind of thing, of that song, of, for, of that kind of style, which is not reggae, they, uh, they notice that, you know what I mean? So what that does is that it, oh, it, 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 because of the spike, the huge spike, spike into num- the trap is into number one in a matter of four days, it going to record on the system that, which is to help the argument of creating soca as an international recognized genre in and of itself, it will help that argument mm-hmm. that the trap has a fan base, a listenership that is streaming and downloading music and interacting with music in that way. Because in the Caribbean, majority of the way all people consume music is by way of performance. And that's where a majority of the revenue is being made in Caribbean music is in performance, in a jam, in a fair, that kind of thing, on a festival. So the Caribbean doesn't really consume music by way of streaming as much. We are very low, as a matter of fact, we are non existent in that, you know what I mean? And it's simply because um, we. Don't have the platforms, I guess, and we don't buy music. The Caribbean people doesn't buy music, per se. Um, but we're trying to change that. So, um, the song reaching number one helps the argument, helps the push the vibe forward, the, the agenda of that. It's always about numbers and metric, you know what I mean? So, we will, if that continues, like other songs come out and you know, come up on the charts more, more soca um, oriented type songs come on the chat. Then what it, what is going to happen is that the iTunes and the rest of them are going to have to branch out and be soca. They won't think that it's not soca. Mm-hmm. But if everyone wants in a blue or never at all, then they don't really care. It's about numbers. You know what I mean? That's how it goes. So um, what that does for us is that it should. Well, as far as our people here in Dominica and in the fraternity, it should show them that there is and importance in creating music to be utilized by the market in soca, right? Because we all know, we are not a market, we are market is in soca. Mm-hmm. If Samantha was on the Uber soca cruise, not on the Uber Buya cruise, there's no Uber Buya cruise, right? Soca cruise. He's going to Spain, I mean, it's a soca festival, and I mean, it's a Buya festival, right? So we need to behave with that argument, please. It is ridiculous. So let me look at the business. Of that, we and I said that we should make soca music. We should continue the buyo, but understand that it is soca is the umbrella genre as far as business goes. The umbrella genre is soca, and then we we we, we utilize the markets more. The standard of the music will in, improve because 
if we if we micro if 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 we if we look at the music from, uh, from a microscopic perspective, then you're going to find that we have to look at what happened in Dominica alone. Then we can we have to reference music. We have to look at reference music with the top songs in Dominica. That's what we're going to create from the top songs in Dominica, local songs. And those songs necessarily are not really the best of the songs in a sense. You know what I mean? But if we say if we look at it from a broader standpoint of that by way of looking at soca, then we can say the top song in the soca market is X. So we can work towards having that type of quality and utilize that the market and the avenues and all this. So it's a major plus for our music, you know what I mean? All right. I think we may have some people who may want to reach out to us. So uh, we're going to try to take a couple of calls uh, on the program. The numbers are 449-3095, 449-3096. 449-3097. The overseas line is 305-432-9624. And uh, already the line is going, but I, I want to ask a question. Um, I'm, I'm the, let me just take this one and when we come back, I will uh, we'll talk about that. Hello, good evening. Hello. Good evening. Hi. Good. Hi, Dion. I'm good. And Dyer, not respect. Bless up, bless up. Yes, I just want to tell you congratulations. And I, I mean, I'm happy proud that um, Dominica, you know, made this kind of display 2019, you know. I mean, I always know Dominica always produced some great musicians from since Grammar International. I don't know if you're aware that. Yeah, absolutely. Grammar Spain Super Bowl 13. In the United States in 1975, you know, because the talent that they had, it looks like that talent is still passed on to this generation. But listening to you, I mean, I learned a lot, and I really appreciate what you've been doing. But um, do you think that, I don't want to, you know, don't feel this, but don't disrespect a lot like that, because we are listening and I think in everything you say, and I am telling you, speak honestly. Like, who you are going to be under the umbrella of Soka, and if you had gone to the strictly who you are, it would not have gone to the number one chart. Like, went on iTunes, if you had just went to be like, just who you are. Okay, thank you, Dion. Okay, so, um, the track is not a Dominican 100% project, right? It is a song that is done in combination with two trees. Marsha Montano, who happened to be the biggest artist from the Caribbean, one of the, certainly the biggest in that style of music, and Bungie Gallin, who is right next to him. So these two artists are soca artists, you know what I mean? And Skimmy Fabulous. So the Ready Boo you're coming into play is by way of the rhythm and the origin of the rhythm. So at the end of the day, it wasn't something where we got to say is a boo or is a that or is a that. Is the thing, is the fact is that um, it, the fact is that it would have, because of this song with that, the cast that is on the track, it is under the agenda of Soka, 100%. However, the reading, like I said, by origin is that of Dominica, reflects Bouillon. But I will say, to answer your question, I think I just catch it there, that if Dominica have a Bouillon track, or, or, or what we would like to consider a 100% Bouillon Dominican track, a Dominican track, this can happen for Dominica as well because it is not only iTunes soca chart, it's on a reggae chart, you know what I mean? So it's not nothing about trying to get priority or nothing, it's just that it's on a reggae chart that comes from the Caribbean. So you look at the Caribbean as a whole and not necessarily trying at the moment, okay. you know what I mean? So that is just to answer your question. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Yes, go ahead quickly. I put this up and I respect that and I look forward to see I'm going to be doing it. All right, thank you. <laughs> Hello, good evening. Hello. Yes. Yes, good evening. Calling from New York. I started launching up that track on for Boom Champion. In Trinidad with Marshall and um, Skinny Banton and I. I Skinny Fabulous. Yeah, yeah. I must recommend to Gentleman to see Radio and Producer that song. And I mean, 
and the Dominican, I feel very proud of you. When I saw the live launch, I was on the station in Trinidad. And congratulations to him and listening to your program, and uh, happy New Year to you guys. All right. Thank you so much for your contribution. I have to ask you this, um, Dada. Mm -hmm. Is this what you do for your living? And um, do you make a living out of this? Do you survive on this? Yeah, 100%. 100%? Yeah. And are you comfortable? I try to get comfortable. You know, like comfortable is, is um, relative, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's comfortable for you, probably different for me, you know what I mean? It works. But you're surviving as a producer yeah. um, in Dominica. And so um, you're comfortable with that as a job. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you feel that others can do the same. Of course. In, in Dominica. Of course, of course. I do it. Look, we do it. <laughs> 19 minutes past the 10 o'clock hour. And uh, we won't go past 10.30. <laughs> we won't go past 10.30. But I, I still have to find out a bit data about some of the work that you've done in the region. You've worked with some other folks in the region, and we mentioned earlier on right. that um, you had an opportunity to be skinny fabulous yeah, a couple of yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. So you've not only been here in Dominica doing work, and this is not your first um, yeah. regional project, like you mentioned earlier before. Um, but you've done some, you've won some crowns in the yeah, in the in yeah. the region as well. Let's talk a, a couple about those. Okay, so. Um Two thousand and ten, one Soka Monarchy in Saint Lucia, Ruby. Um, after that, I won a few. Well, Vinci is who kind of really it, it kind of became real serious for me. I guess from ever since I started winning, um, from two thousand ten or so, I kind of had a, an, an appetite for winning crowns. You know what I mean? Because when I have the the the, the philosophy. One of my philosophies is this. When you win, people pay attention. Mm -hmm. You don't win, nobody cares. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. It's either you first or you last. That's how it is. You know what I mean? So I'd say in that too, in a, in a way of animosity and all but in a, in a sense of understanding the importance of winning. There's a, 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 there's, it's important to win in this industry because this industry is a results-driven industry. I cannot stress that enough. Results is what takes you places in this business. You have the results, nobody cares. Nobody cares if you can play a keyboard. Nobody cares if you want to play. People care if you win significant stuff, if you do something significant. Like that iTunes if number one. you make one. an impact. Yeah. The iTunes number one is significant. Because you know who looks at that? The billboards. You know? These kind of things. Rolling Stones. That's who looks at these things. Winning and getting number ones is very important in this business. It's results driven. So yeah, so you have... Um, so that's where my, my appetite for women came from. And um, Vinci, Vinci in 2014, I won my first groovy in Vinci with Fireman Hooper, who is one of the, um, I would say, direct rivals of Skinny Fabulous. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think in 2015 was when Skinny Fabulous came to Dominica for Korean Nipa. Because so, I remember the year after we won that title was when Skinny came down and I met with him. At the park, and you'll say, Lee, want some of that thing I give it to them fellas there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll say, me, that's right. Um, that was the year after. Um, that's also when we did this song, that when Lime Flow, it's currently, brought Skinny Banton from Grenada Salt and some fish. Salt Fish, which is a track that I worked on as well, you know, which was massive. Uh, we did a remix with Alison Hines, and that's when my first time working with Alison at the, at the moment. I worked with Edwin around the same time, Edwin Yearwood. Um, 2016. These are some of the names in the These guys trust me with their work like crazy. You know what I mean? Um, 2016, I produced a rhythm called the Lord Rhythm. 2015, 16, and uh, it did really, really well for us in Grenada. Um, there's a song called In My Dreams on that rhythm that was massive. It was number one for so long in Grenada. As a matter of fact, that song is what kind. Of, that's really. That song was one of the songs that kind of helped, kind of started launching me in Trinidad. Because after the success of, success of that song, that kind of a show in Winchester reached out to me the week after Spice Masters finished in August. You know what I mean? And that was when I realized that, yo, these guys paying attention to mm -hmm. you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so on. So then after that, we did a song 
on that rhythm for Trinidad Caliber 2016 called Oh Gosh by Flippo, who is now as a Ryan, which did really well. That was my biggest, most commercial, commercially successful track to before that family track, you know what I mean? And um, that song is massive. I think it had won almost 3 million views on YouTube and all that kind of thing. It was really, really, really big. And then from there, even Flippo himself was saying, yo, they just are coming to you, you know. They're going to start coming to you now because, you know, that track was heavy. I think the, that year after I went to Trinidad to do some radio tour and all these kind of things, where I learned a lot of stuff. I learned also that these people don't know about Dominica much over there and they would like to know about Dominica, you know, so we should go down there and, you know, before we can, you know, be part of what's going on, the good stuff going on down there and things. So that's 2016, 2017, I did a rhythm called Zabuka Rhythm, which is, which is the rhythm that caused Skinny to really feel a certain type of way. You know what I mean? Because we beat him in Soccer Monarch bad that year. You know what I mean? We won everything. We won Soccer Monarch. And we won Power Soccer Monarch and Road Match with Problem Child. Problem Child, uh, yeah, Problem Child, yeah, we won Road Match in Vinci. That was the biggest hit I had. You know what I mean? So that kind of announced that as, you know, the Power Soccer kind of. They always say, me, and then, from ever since then, the, the guy said me that, the, but that boy, you know, have a voodoo about it. <laughs> and if first something they told, told me that was in 2017. They really have a kind of voodoo about it, you know what I mean? Not in a negative way. Yes. It just have a way to captivate the people, you know what I mean? And so on. And 2018, well, that year, I also did a rhythm called Melanin Rhythm that features Father Fox out of Barbados and a few local acts like Stasha and um, Aureli, with Aurel, mm -hmm. and um, a couple of guys from here as well. I can't remember what exactly. I think. Somebody's asking question for Dana. What was the experience working with these guys? What is your takeaway from the project and how detailed are those guys when it comes to the finished products? I will say you would have mentioned a bit of that a bit yeah, earlier yeah, on yeah, in the yeah, program. Yeah. Well, I will say for the last part, uh, the first thing, the experience is this. It's a great experience working with the top guys in the industry. You can only learn from these guys that do it every day, right? Um, so I learned a lot in terms of dedication, which is something I already knew. Because there's this guy, his name is Lebo Francis de Lima, he, he deceased now. He died a few years ago of cancer last year. So Francis de Lima Lebo from St. Lucia, he produced Roly Poly for Mr. Killer. You know what I mean? So I met him I met him in 2009 in St. Lucia and we have been tight from ever since. So he was one of the people that started pushing me, telling me that, listen Dana, we are in this business, we are in, we are in the business of detail. You know what I mean? So when you see working on your tracks, always detail your music. It's about detail. So from ever since working with uh, non-Dominican got, got gathering that experience um, of detailing, spending time detailing vocals and detailing the rhythm, make sure everything sit down right and all these things, make sure it cook right. You know, I cannot have that, I cannot practice detail a lot, you know what I mean? So working with these guys, I understand detail, working with them, you know what I mean, at that level. So I already detail everything before they even tell me anything. So you're like, Marshall in particular is very, is very particular with his work and very meticulous. He looks at every detail. This man looks at everything, you know what I mean? As one of his, his, his road managers was saying that Marshall at the computer, he doesn't miss nothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that means if something is, 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 I wouldn't say off, because at this level we don't do things that off. You know, that's all when you're amateur, not at this level. Um, but when you see something is not rolling right, something's not going correct, the way he feels it should be, in, in as much as you probably not hearing, he'll tell you, listen, see that part there? We have to check that part because it has to be right. You know what I mean? And he, but he's not difficult to work with either. Probably because from the way we started working, he kind of trusted the way I was working because of how we started working and my, how, how open I was. Because he even made mention of that. Or in his um, program in China, where he said that I was really open and put my ego aside, and he put his ego aside, and Marshall put his, his ego aside, and Bungie as well, and to come together and just make it work. And I, being the producer, is the one that I spend the most time. Were you nervous at all in any way? No, no, no. At the beginning, were you intimidated? No, of course not, because I'm a professional. That's what I want. That's 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 always been what I've been waiting for. The big stage. I wanted that big opportunity. So first thing I put aside was my feelings. Mm -hmm. I put the feelings aside, I look at it as music. I know how good I am. Mm -hmm. That's just me. I want to show them how good I am. What did this do for your confidence? <laughs> oh boy. 
I wouldn't say it's through the roof, mm-hmm. but if I say it's through the roof, you will understand. Mm-hmm. They should understand why. Mm-hmm. But your 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 nose long here little, like we say. Uh, of course, compass. because now it is certified now. Yes. Right now, I that I get through as in a century that mm-hmm. you get through. That's what that means. You you gone. Because yeah. what happened now is that that brand is solidified now as a hit making brand. In the business, not just a regular average, like a hit making brand, like people reaching out to me every day. I was about to, so that was going to be my next question. Yeah. Um, what has happened since then in terms of um, demand for the product and yeah. demand for the producer? Demand for the producer is crazy. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of demand. Actually, when I was by you, right, right, Saturday, right, you see, I right? came in from the French market. From the French market, right? Yes, yes, right. you know, so. Um, so that happens. Um, well, the people. Excuse me. I mean, people will always, because of how the industry is, we, um, the next big best, the next best song, the next new song, I don't say best, but the next new song that creates such an impact, people will always jump for it. You know what I mean? Like a new, you remember when Soul Dance, the chips are just from the middle. Mm-hmm. Now everybody listens to Soul Dance, <laughs> that kind of way. It's something so. So it's so up to me now. It's up to me now to maintain certain quality. And there's another important thing quality control. I can't work with everybody, you know what I mean? I only work on projects that I want to work on, but I cannot work with everybody because of I don't want to water down my product, which is important. That's what I have, is a product, and I have to maintain, maintain it, and I have to protect it. And one of the ways I can damage my product is by watering it down, by working with everybody that comes to me. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make any sense. Because you know, you know what happens? The people coming to me because they want hits. They were number ones, and everybody, everybody wouldn't get a number one from you. True. You know what I mean? It's not gonna. It's, it's unrealistic. You know what I mean? So I only work on songs that I want to work on. You know what I mean? Um, because it is important that I do songs. I choose my projects carefully right now. So there are some people that I work with because we have a work relationship already. Mm-hmm. But then see for the new guys, I will scrutinize them a whole lot. But there are some new projects coming in, massive new projects. Mm-hmm that we have to release in the coming weeks for Dominica as well. Mm-hmm. Some big, big ones, you know, that we come in. I mean... You yeah. mentioned that like, one to me, at least, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but we won't, huge, spill, right? we won't spill the beans. We won't spill the beans right now. Yeah. It's a surprise, you know yes, what I mean? Yes. And then also, for the other carnivals, I have a lot of... I have a couple of the massive ones mm-hmm. working with, you know what I mean? Looking forward to hearing, yeah, you know, yeah. what's going to come on from that little... Um, spots in, yeah. in, in that location that we, we spent some Try time on Saturday. Yes, you should. <laughs> you know. um, so, I mean, I can tell from, from, from this um, that uh, quite a bit has happened as a result of this, of this project. Um, you, you, you have a situation where the project has gained international recognition international chats yep. um of course in the region because that's what we know um in dominica i think um those who probably didn't quite understand um what 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 what, what transpired with this project good, yeah, yeah, yeah. are much clearer now and i hope yeah, they yeah. have a different perspective about the about, about I mean, the whole thing i mean just to add you know the culture there's a the dominican people generally you are supportive of this i mean I mean, I have never seen Dominicans more proud to be Dominican. I tell you, from all over the region, all in the diaspora, Dominicans are on that. You know what I mean? Like, yo, this is it's like Dominicans. We feel like we are, we are in it now. Like we are, we are there. We are among the big boys. You know what I mean? So no longer when we go to a fete, they will call um, Trini Massive and Bajan and the Saint Lucians and Antigua. They just jumping over Dominica like yes. I feel like you know. No, I said no, no, no. no. They have to fix. That's right. Hey, this is Dominican. We give them the number one. Okay. This is, yeah, yeah. Somebody's asking any chance of working with Asa. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> uh, mm. No comment on this one. I'll answer for that. <laughs> no on this one. Dana, we have to wrap things up. You know, yeah. I really enjoyed the conversation tonight. Yeah. Um, you know, I think a lot of things um, uh, became clearer. Right, yeah. um, I think we have an understanding of what the the concept was, yeah, what the intention was and still is, yes, yes, yes. and um, it still is all about Dominica and pushing 100%. Dominica and Dominican music and still maintaining the bouillon, but just sort of um, um, 
sharing sharing it a bit um with 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 a few of our friends from outside yeah, of yeah, Dominica. Yeah, yeah. That's that's basically you know what it is. So I'm gonna afford you the opportunity to to share your final comments. If there's anything of significance that you left out and you feel that like you probably need to share before we wrap up, the platform is yours, my dear. All right. Well, um, first of all, you know, I want to say that um, I felt the love from Dominican people. You know what I mean? That I've never felt before. Um, the love and embrace something that I thought that wasn't existing in the in in, in, in in Dominica in a sense as for a musician. I felt it over the past two weeks. I mean I've been getting a lot of love from the region but um, from the Dominicans that's been crazy. Dominicans really show out. Dominicans really claim this, you know, on the looking at it from a positive perspective. Dominicans really claimed this and they claimed me. And that's what I really wanted was for them to know that they have a dog in the race now. You know what I mean? There's somebody to root for in this thing. You know what I mean? And so I just want to you know, like say thank you to the people for being so supportive. And also, I want to make special mention of Marshall Montano, first and foremost, for welcoming me as part of his team. Very open and um, skinny fabulous. Um, for creating that kind of a product and believing in the product, Bungie as well, and Feyan for just welcoming me as their new brother in that, because it's a brotherhood, you know what I mean? So Dada now is part of that network, and not just about Dada, it's also Dominica, because it's not them alone, but other people will be looking to Dominica for more of that kind of good stuff that we have, you know what I mean? So I just want to make special mention of that because they have been really, really supportive and you know what I mean? Yeah, it's just a love, you know what I mean? So I the objective right now is to go to Marshall Mondays with my Dominica flag. So when they perform in family, you will see that big Dominica flag there on Marshall Mondays so that the whole world can see because Marshall Mondays will be televised internationally as it does, you know what I mean? And yeah, so that's what the objective is right now. Next level now, we're going to bring the on the international stage. So that's what it is now. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Krishna Dada Lawrence. Yeah. Producer, Dominican. Thank you for joining us on the program tonight. And we thank all of those of you who tuned in via whichever medium you chose tonight. Uh, we were live on Q95 on the website as well. And uh, via my Facebook page and Dara's Facebook page as well. And we have had quite a few viewers. We thank you for coming on and logging in and checking out the program. Next week, we begin our series where we'll just do two programs with the Miss Dominica contestants. So next week, Monday, contestants number one, two, and three will be here with me in studio so you can get to know them a bit better. And we know that, you know, we all have our favorites. We always choose our favorites. And the following Monday, we will have the two remaining contestants and Miss Dominica 2017, Jade Romaine. All right, so that's what it's going to be like for the next couple of Mondays. And I suspect some way, somehow, the focus will remain on Carnival until Carnival. Thank you so much, everyone. I tried my best here tonight. I guess you can still hear the nasal um, tone in my voice, but I survived through it. Thank you so much. Until next week, Monday. Good night. God bless everyone.